I I am forever. I need to I need to find Tim Fallon. We need to have a chat about how wonderful his music is because it's incredible. I don't know. You know what else is incredible? Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the Beer Day stream today on this fine 6th of May, 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and we'll have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead of you. I'm stumbling over the words themselves and the things that happen in the middle. Um, but yeah, no, I've had a, a very, a very smooth sailing and fairly just, I don't know, event packed. I guess I've done tons of stuff. Uh, but how about let's uh, dive right into today's game, which is you know, again, uh, Chris too. Uh, <laughs> well, we're getting there. We're almost at the end. It's possible it might be over today. We'll see. Or if you're watching the stream vod, then you'll definitely know because uh, it's it's got the it's got the um <laughs> you know finale in the name. Um, I'm hoping it's close to the end. We don't have much to really do, but there is a. Uh, one thing that I haven't done yet, and I was like, man, I forgot about this one, didn't I? So let's head over to Dragon Warrior 2. It's like Dragon Quest 2, but the English name. Um, welcome back. Uh, <laughs> to reach next level, I need 7,000. Art needs 5,000. 14,000. This is, uh, I'm doing, like, timing numbers, where even though I saw 5992. Have you ever noticed this for, like, motorsport drivers? It's like... It's like whenever they'll get like a uh, 1 minute 15.999, that's a 115. But if someone else gets a 116.000, that's a 116. So, uh, first things first, uh, I need to go up the stairs because uh, it, it, hasn't, it hasn't manifested yet. But uh, but I need to um, actually hold the evil statue still. Um, do I have... Much room? I've got a little bit of room. I got a little bit of room. Let's actually see. Hold on, is there anything else I can sell just before I head off? Um So let's see. I have a slot token, uh sickle. Sickle I can definitely get rid of. Uh the Gaia armor you're not equipping. Am I putting oh am I putting away the Gaia armor? I've completely forgotten. Uh I would need to, yeah, I need to put that away. Because, yeah. It's technically an exclusive. Um, so there's that. And then you're holding on to, I mean, some wizard things, so. Uh, so let's actually, yeah, let's, uh, let's, whoop, let's store the, uh, the Gaia armor. Because I'm not going to need that anymore. Um, in theory, I may not need some of the keys as well. But we'll hold on to that just for a moment. Um, one thing you may have noticed in my, uh, inventory is, uh, the Holy Loom. This is the, uh, one half of a side quest that I just haven't returned to, and it's sort of because I, I'd completely forgotten where the other half was. I knew where you need two items in order to, um, complete this, in order to, uh, capitalize on this, uh, Holy Loom, I guess. And, uh, well, I have to fight some more monsters. Double Orc in one group and one walk in another. Um, but yeah, there were two items. The Holy Loom was one, and uh, <laughs> there's, there's another item and I'm just like, man, uh, forgive me for missing this, because the, uh, I mean, you'll see it and you'll be like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I've, had, I've had an okay week. Um, it gets more and more okay as I talk about it, but, uh, um, I realized last week, I mentioned one, I, I was like, I'm not gonna talk about the controversial, what's the controversial air quotes? I, I, I made, I made the talk about how there was a game that was controversial and I, I came to the conclusion that it was like, mm, the controversy just seems manufactured maybe to just drive interest, but I don't actually think it's, uh, really controversial, it really shouldn't be controversial. And then I proceeded to not name drop Stellar Blade. But I said Stellar Blade a couple of times, and, uh, probably some people noted that and was like, hey, and I'm like, yeah, whoops. Um, I kind of want, I, I want the game to do well if people do like it. That's obviously the point at the end, but I think as well, like, um, you know, there, there is grounds for stuff to be changed and stuff to, not as in, like, now once the game's out and it's like, 
I, I mean, I, I, I know it's like I'm asking for more work, but it's like things that need to be in place or things that, you know, from in the future, we need to make sure that games aren't, uh, you know, censored or stuff like that. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> then near the end, I was going to lead into the segue about like consumer rights and uh, expectations. And I mentioned by name Escape from Tarkov and I didn't go into it. So let's go into it first. Uh, Escape from Tarkov uh, had an update. Um, first of all, I, it, I, I knew of people who had played Tarkov, but it didn't actually click in my head until like really after reading this. Escape from Tarkov is not on Steam. It's a uh, exclusively sold through their website, and um, all the prices are in uh, are in uh, euros. So you'd have to wing it a little bit. It's kind of like Minecraft back in the day. You remember that one? Just imagine that. Um, Escape from Tarkov, I think, they haven't changed the prices of the standard edition, which- Oh, wait, um, okay, these are in US dollars. Okay. Um, maybe they do sell in euros in some ways, but... Okay, I've got US dollars right here, so we'll just say it in US dollars. Um, Escape from Tarkov, uh, originally was, uh, charged, and it still is, uh, 50 US dollars for a base edition of the game. Um, technically, this game is still in just some pre-testing, pre-alpha, whatever. Um, but given that they continually try to sell the game, and I don't know, is there, are there microtransactions? Maybe? I'm not sure if they are. But they definitely have a, a season, you know, system. I don't think it's a season pass that's monetized, but the idea is that you work out the character for your season. I don't know what the payoff is. Um, they have a, uh, a, um, kind of a, what's it, they call it the Left Behind Edition, as like a, a super duper version. Um, the only real difference that I think is in it is, uh, your stash, which is I assume the amount of items you can hold on to between your, your attempts at Tarkov is, uh, a bit bigger, from the sounds of it. Um, and you may get more items. Oh, I need to scroll through here. Uh, for reference as well, so you remember these are the, the, the Twin Towers? Um, we never went into the north one, and there's nothing to see in the north one. And in fact, actually, it's almost pointless. Almost pointless. But go up two flights of stairs, so you're on the third floor, and then proceed to stand here? Or here? Just, in particular, the Duyan, or Duyan, I don't, we, it, we in Australia, we always say like, a, like a J for a D-E kind of sound, like, like that. Um, but then it sounds like Jew as in, like, Jewish, and that always, that always throws me off, because, uh, it's hot in the, hot, it's very topical right now to, <laughs> to, uh, say, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's yarn. It's yarn. Actually, fun fact, in, um, in later games, there's nothing else in the tower, by the way. You can head up to the top, and you can float down to the other side if you were still holding onto the cape, but there's no other items, and... If I had enemies spawn, they would have been the same enemies as the other side. So, very straightforward. Um, but the position of that is just like, huh? You just have to know that it's some random tile on the floor, which is a different tile in each version of the game, but I'm pretty sure if you're playing the Game Boy Color version, it's that tile. Um, but uh, in later translations, where they could write more letters, for the name of an item. This is actually the, uh, Celestial Skein. Skein? 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 I think it's Skein. Um, the Celestial Skein is actually a, uh, a, um, regular kind of, uh, crafting item in Dragon Quest IX, which I thought was very interesting. Actually, I think it appears in 10 and 11 as well, because a lot of things appear in 10 and 11. Um, and very, very interestingly as well, uh, you can, uh, craft a very particular item in Dragon Quest IX, if you had, uh, the Celestial Skein and some, uh, Enchanted Robes, which con conveniently is the same item that we're about to craft right now, or at least get a guy to help us with. Um, so anyway, back to Tarkov. Let's not get too dis uh, distracted. There is then a Super Duper Deluxe Edition, um, which is 110 US dollars. Uh, this uh, used to guarantee 
the full, like, you know, any expansions or whatever would also be included in this, and you get a, a, an even more slightly bigger stash. But we're now at the point where this is now, you know, more than double the price of the regular game, and 110 US dollars, you know, that's, that's really asking for it, especially for what extra modes is there? Well, anyway, so I think the devs of Escape from Tarkov said on uh, some site, maybe it's their blog, actually. I'm not too sure, I've lost the pages, and I've also a bit of a TSA, so I'm not going to characterize the devs. Um, but they basically said they got no money. And uh, for a game being in the early access of some variety, um, no money is pretty much, you know, the amount of revenue of people continuing to buy the game is not paying for the amount of dev work to actually create the game. Um, whether your dev work is financially mismanaged is maybe up to circumstance. Like, obviously, you know, like, if I worked on a game part-time, I would not need a very regular stream of money. Like, I could just, you know, make do with, like, oh, you know, like, a couple grand a month because I've already got a job, like, somewhere else. You know what I mean? Um, I assume these guys are definitely full-time. They've also been going for, like, eight years. But I would have imagined, you know, depending on how many people... That should be okay, given how many sales Tarkov has had, right? Maybe. We'll see. Um, so what they've done is that they've sort of repealed the idea of the $110 edition of the game having extra content, just to then introduce a brand new $250 US dollar. That's right, $250 US dollar um, tier, which... Uh, basically, again, increases the stash size, and it introduces access to this co-op PvE mode. Uh, which people were like, I swear that was what I bought the $110 version. It also introduces a couple of, uh, overpowered items, I think some people said, uh, including, uh, something like, uh, your pockets are bigger, which means that you can now carry ammo in a pocket, as opposed to just, like, a little tiny stem or something like that. Um, and this may be, uh, too overpowered. Uh, it's caused a bunch of people to complain about how the- Oh, I forgot to sell the sickle. Um, to definitely complain about how, you know, like, this is one. Um, it, well, I guess if I call it misleading, yeah, maybe. Um, but I- I was gonna go into this whole point about how, like, you know, if you have a game that's, like, a, an ongoing game, a service game, if you will, um, then, uh, you know, it's very- th there is no safety net, I guess. For players who, you know, have a game at a, at a certain version and they like the game at that version and then suddenly something makes it worse. There is no safety net for a consumer to really, you know, go, hey, I really only want to play this version. And I kind of get that, like, even if a game allowed you to download old versions, which, uh, let's bring up the Minecraft example because Minecraft does and I think everyone unanimously says that beta 1.8 is where the game went downhill because it added a, hun a hunger bar and the hunger bar is the worst thing ever. Um, <laughs> I just joke. But um, Minecraft at least lets you, um, you know, download any version of the game you want. But in order to play with people online, you've got to be on the same version. And, uh, you know, for games where you're not coordinating your friends to play on a server, it's trickier to pull that off. Um, maybe with a server browser that crosses versions, maybe. Uh, so check out this guy, which we already talked to, and he's like, So, you brought all that I needed. You're determined to make me work. Fine, I'll weave you a water rope, but I need time. Return for it another day. And you can ask him, and he's like, I'm not done. And you're like, oh, okay, sure. So obviously, what you gotta do is, uh, you know, go over to the nearby inn, have a, have a sleep, have a rest. Welcome to Owen. So I'm pretty sure we clarified that there wasn't a save guy in this town, right? Just for, just for clarity. There's like a little tiny church over here, but it's just one guy. And then this is like the, the thing. This is, okay, this is one part that I'm like, ugh, ugh. For reference, when he says come by another day, he literally means the game needs to be turned off. And, uh, since I have no idea if there's a guy who lets you save over there, you sort of have to wander away from the town, and then towards somewhere where you can save. Which is a bit annoying. 
unfortunately, I don't think it's too far a uh, trek to get back to the town that I started at. Um, I'm gonna have the boat in a little bit of a weird position, but... Uh, I think it works out in the end. Um, but yeah, the, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, if you play Tarkov or own Tarkov, you know, you're, you're a bit stuffed in this um, instance, you know. The game has gotten significantly worse for you as a player, and they're sort of just demanding more and more money. 250 US dollars is a very, very big commitment as well, because um, I was looking around at, like, music software, and uh, I am... I am a... Ooh, Copper Sword. Um, I'm a... I'm not exactly, like, lose pockets enough to, like, sink a ton of money, but a part of me was, like, um, looking around at, uh, what was it, the IK Multimedia Tools? And they got, like, a big bundle of, like, a lot of things they made. I think the only things that they don't currently have in the bundle is, like, their piano sounds. But, like, music is an interesting one for me because it's, like, you know, the technology may be kind of fancy. I don't really know what goes on under the hood, but I would certainly imagine having a lot of real instruments and recording a lot of audio takes a lot of time. Making sure the audio is great, making sure that you've stitched it all together and it works fine as a digital instrument, because on top of that, it's not just a bunch of sounds, it's a bunch of, you know, sounds that you can play virtually and it sounds okay as an instrument. Um, and maybe also, you know, a bunch of UI designers, because, uh, Music software is very, like, skew-morphic. They love, like, emulating real things and making sure that the UI makes the most sense for that kind of stuff. I don't imagine it's cheap, but yet, their bundle that contains a lot of stuff, a lot of, like, you know, bass tones and drum tones and, uh, you know, amplifiers and uh, pedals and um, other kinds of just effects uh, places, um, some various synths as well. Um, they charge 600 euro, uh, which equates to about a thousand Australian dollars. I think euro and US dollars are pretty close. Um, that that is for like the prima donna, prima donna. That's not the right word. The prime, um, like example of uh, see, this is what I mean. I gotta sail around this island. Um, that's for their prime bundle of like this is all the stuff. And the best part about music software, I guess, is that you can. Um, you know, obviously make your own music. Like, the whole point of, you know, some of the costs is that it's kind of like a licensing cost. By buying the instrument or buying the software, you therefore are granted rights in order to just make the music as you want. That's the whole point of all the stuff. And that that's always a fun thing as well, is like, when people talk about, like, sampling, like, music and sampling kinds of other stuff, that's where it's like, they're really stretching the definition. But for, yeah, but... For projects with like virtual instruments like this or even real instruments, um, that's part of the price. 600 euros for a lot of different kinds of stuff. Um, it, I mean, it might be valuable or not depending on the quality of the other sounds. I'm okay with the free sounds right now. I'll, and they've got smaller bundles if you just want bits of things. This sounds like an ad. This is not an ad. This is just I'm looking in the market for things. And the whole point is that I'm comparing something that's ballpark I was looking in that area and then I go back to this and I go this is one video game I like yeah I mean you know you get extra content and stuff but for a game that's been in development for eight years I don't trust that there's enough content to like sink through before they haven't made it yet you know what I mean like this is um Farmville is effectively uh, Farmville is always a great example because Farmville is an idle game at, at its heart, and they pad out the content by making you wait for time, and then you check back in, and by the time you check back in, a lot of the time, oh, they've developed some new things, they've added some new bits that go on to the end of the game, or, you know, fancify the, the earlier sections of the game. Um, but the whole point is that they, like, at least pad out the amount of time people should be engaged with the game, such that, you know, uh, by, you know, they can actually develop the rest of the game. Tarkov sort of tries to do a little bit of that by having the seasons. So seasons don't exactly demand players to play 100% all the time, because effectively you'll cap out all the stuff that you've done in a season, and then it all resets and you start again. Um, and to some degree it's like you can use that as like, oh, I'm repeating the same steps over and over and over again. Uh, but certainly uh, that does not, you know, 
work forever for everyone. And, uh... Yeah, I, d I don't think this is really, you know... I don't think this is really how you do it, by, like, padding out the... the playtime and then promising people all this stuff. And you haven't actually made it yet. Um... But... Yeah, as a, as a consumer, like, what do you do when a game just gets worse? You just gotta suck it up, and you move on. And then eventually, you become like me, and you get a bit too jaded. Um... So, by the way, let's take care, and I'm gonna do a, a, a soft reset, which is right there, after the save. The game requires you to turn it off, or at least reset, or something. I think you, maybe exiting out to the menu is enough. I'm not sure if, like, doing a persisted save game is actually enough as well. Like, if you could just save in the overworld and then reload the save, that actually might have worked as well. I've taken the long route. But given that, like, you gotta get a boat over to- well, you need to have the- the fancy key. This isn't really available to you until very close to the end of the game, but certainly I could have done that a while ago, so... Uh, but... yeah. I- on top of that as well, uh, it sounds like, uh, you know, community manager is doubling down on this decision, or maybe at least, you know, and, and uh, I guess it's a, it's always a tough position for a community manager because, like, you're sort of being paid to opine and to defend the company who, well, that's what you're paid. Um, why are you doing it for free if, <laughs> why, you know, I don't, you should get paid for that. Um, but it's, it's always an unglamorous position, and to some degree it also attracts very dubious actors. Um, people who, uh, sort of thrive off power dynamics. I don't know, it happens a lot. Not everyone, but certainly it happens. Um... And, uh, that's always, that's always a weird one as well, because it's just like... To me, as someone who hasn't engaged in one of these games in a long time, um... I would less like a community manager and more, um, just an actual dev who takes a bit of time out of his day to respond to some feedback. I don't need every single person in the entire community to get an answer for things because a lot of the time, most people in the community will ask very similar questions or can extrapolate a good meaning out of a very, very tangential question. Um, but yeah, when it comes to like, oh, you know, like, you know, we're unhappy about how this, this, uh, you know, scenario is for our game. The game that we paid for. And then a, a community manager is just like, yeah, but, like, this needs to happen. Which, granted, I, like, I'm not saying I like the $250 purchase. But if they say they've run out of money, then finding, <laughs> I, I'm gonna say this broadly, and this is not a, you know, agreement with this is the right exact way to do it, but finding more methods of monetization is a path, I guess. Um, I'd probably make the argument of inspire more interest in the game and get more transactions out of that. Or alternatively just let the game sit as it is and just halt development. Like, I know that's heartbreaking, but it's like legit, you know, slow the heck down, reduce your spending. If the revenue builds up over time again, and running a server is really not that expensive. You could do, you could do that freely. If you really wanted to as well, you can say, okay, like, the game needs to have servers running, so we need to, you know, let's just set up a pool. Anyway, this guy is like, ah, what timing? I finished weaving only just now. Do you see? This is a water robe. The young lady should don this. Technically, everyone in the game can actually wear this, uh, robe. But, uh, he is right. The best person, uh, to wear it is, I, I appreciate that, uh, gave it to the wrong person as well. Um, technically, yes, everyone can wield the, uh, the water robe, but it is the best equipment for, for, uh, Nana, so we'll give her it. It is so darn good. Look at those stats. It's an extra 30 over whatever she had before, which is very, very nice. I think she only had, like, I don't know, what did she have before? It was nothing. It was weak source. Um, but, uh, oh, it's super good. On top of that as well, it actually, I think it either does, a, uh, reduces by a third or a half, uh, fire-based spells, which includes the, uh, the all-encompassing, uh, firebane 
which is always mean. No one likes Firebean. So anyway, so let's sell some things that I don't need, like the sickle. Sickle? And now we can sell the evade tunic. There we go. Don't need that. Um, so yeah, maybe other things uh, that we could buy. I guess the only other thing left, because ultimately we're going to be on our trek to the end of the game now. There's not really any other shops uh, or items even. <laughs> to get so uh, we're sort of calling it now of like these are the this is the equipment that I've got um, Obviously for the main character. I think this is pretty much the setup you give him the Thunderbolt blade Which is just the strongest thing in the world and the whole set of lotto armor is Effectively all good uh, for art. Um, I don't know. He's got the lotto sword, which I think is probably the best like follow-up uh, weapon um, I've got the magic armor on him um, you could probably squeeze a little bit more out of the, the, the like, the fur robe. The 65,000 gold item. Um, which also the princess can wield, but the, the water robe is the better item. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, you only get one water robe as well, so, oh well. Um, I've got the heal shield, so at least there's nothing better than, than that, and that's a fair call to, to get that. Um, and, uh, he's got the, uh, the Mysterious Hat, which is very nice. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a Mysterious Hat for Nana. That would be a, a nice little free bit of, uh, free bit of, um, healing there. Uh, and Nana doesn't w have any shield, so don't worry about that. But, uh, I think this is, uh, pretty much, you know, that, also the Bolt is the best weapon for Nana, so. Um, yeah, apart from getting a little bit more money for, uh, for the Fur Robe, don't think there's really anything else I could potentially get. Or oh, the hat, which uh, you can... I think you can buy the hat, right? Yeah, we saw the hat for somewhere. Yeah, that's 20,000, which is... Um, you know, it's, it's a maybe. I guess I'd need to earn a fair bit more money. Uh, oh, it's the Hawks! But other than that, really... And to be fair as well, you don't need the best armor as long as you have good stats. Um, although maybe Art might die quite a fair bit, because it's, it's just like, oh, you know, he could have like 10 more defense. Um, who knows. Uh... But, I honestly do think, like, level experience is sort of, you know, how you play for. I'm now just typing up, where do you find Liquid Metal Slimes regularly? How do I No, that's Dragon Quest Builders 2. That's not Dragon Quest 2. <laughs> Here we go. The Liquid Metal Slime, which does appear in this game first. Uh, well, it does appear in the end dungeon, so I guess there's no risk of that one. Also, he does drop the hat. The hat that I do want, so who knows, I might get it for free. Um, but certainly, he's a tricky, he's a tricky boy to get. He's a very, very tricky boy to get, so. Uh, so let's come sail away. Come sail away, come sail away with me. And, whoops. Did I get poison while I wasn't paying attention? How could he? I love as well, like, there's still, like, more spells to unlock technically, like, I mean... I'm not going to say I'm ever underleveled, but we'll probably feel the grunt when I try to push towards the end of the game again. Um, but yeah. Uh, fortunately for my discussions of Tarkov, I don't know enough about Tarkov to really say too much more than that. But I was going to go into this whole like spiel about how, you know, like, sometimes games just get worse, or, uh, you know, they remove access from games, and I don't know, mention the crew again, and Darkspore, and all that jazz. Um, but I think I had a very, very perfect example come up in this past week, which was Helldivers. Um, this is fun as well, because I had some, the news broke, uh, of the resolution of this at 2 o'clock Australian time, which was, uh, as of, in one minute, exactly seven hours ago at the time of recording. So, uh, it's fairly recent news. If you've woken up and you've missed this, you've missed this whole chaos, um, then... Uh, oh boy, this is a fun treat. Um, 
But uh, the TLDR is that Helldivers 2 on PC at launch uh, did not require Halo. It looks like a Pokemon game. I mean, it is on the Game Boy Color, so you're forced to make your sprites a certain way. And Pokemon is very, very visually similar to Dragon Quest in a lot of ways, so... Um, I guess that's probably why it looks like that. I just love the walk cycle, it's so good. <laughs> um, it's got sleeping in the inns. Churches. You know, just like Pokemon. Uh, so Helldivers 2, um, yeah, when it first came out, uh, players uh, were not required to create a PlayStation Network account. I believe it would prompt you, but there was a skip button saying, hey, yeah, you know, you can link it if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, it is a Sony published game, um, so I guess naturally maybe we'd expect it eventually, but uh, for the moment it didn't happen. There was no, um, there was no requirement. Uh, until an announcement uh, a couple of days ago, uh, at the very least, saying, hey, yeah, um, now's the time. We're going to require the PlayStation Network account login, uh, so... Uh, you, yeah, you didn't you didn't need it in the past, but yeah, now you do. Uh, oh, you don't. You only need PlayStation Plus if you're on uh, PlayStation. Um, I assume that's just because all online games on PlayStation use the PlayStation Plus. Um, but uh, on yeah, on PC, it's just if you buy the game, you can play it. Uh, you don't have to have a PlayStation Network Plus. But uh, yeah, as of uh, the the plan was originally. Uh, you would need to... new players would be immediately prompted. They would not have the option to avoid this. And existing players would eventually need to as of May 30. Um, so I guess in three and a half weeks time. Uh, the amount of backlash for this is... Uh, simultaneously just and... Uh, I, if I say overblown... Yeah, oh yeah, it would have become a monthly... Uh, subscription so I I agree with people being upset about this do I think it's overblown in the sense of like there are totally other like you know like there there are bigger things to complain about than just uh, the you know like requiring uh, an account but I also do agree that like yeah but needing an account all of a sudden, when previously you didn't, the, I guess a big question is, what does the player gain by having a PlayStation Network account? Um, and I don't think there's any reason, really, at all. Like, why? What What do I get out of doing this? Uh, some people, you know, might be just, they link it up because they've wanted it, but like, really, think to yourself, what do you actually gain by having an extra account here? Yeah, I, I don't know, I think the answer is nothing. Now, what does Sony gain by making you link an account? And the answer is... Mm, maybe a couple of things, but I don't think it really means much. This is what I mean by it's probably a bit overblown. It's not really the end of the world either way, but what does it mean for an end user is... nothing. So, that's, that's why it's a problem at the very least. Um... Let's see, oh, do I, yeah, do I remember this off the top of my head? I, I remember, I gotta go to the furthest top, the northwest part of the next floor as well. Oswag! Oh, oh gosh, I tried using the water. Look at that, it's like half damage from the firebane. We're gonna need to be smart with how we take out enemies, though. It's still, even if you take off damage, it still doesn't mean you're exactly impervious to everything. We just need more health, we need more level ups. That's pretty much it. Oh, he's dropping the defense. Never, never fun. Um, so, I guess one, one reason, and this is probably my cynical gut feeling of why this account is being forced. Uh, Sony has, Sony is a publicly traded company and they have shareholders and I think their shareholders just set a KPI of we want to have so many player active PlayStation Network users and we want to do things to increase 
the amount of PlayStation Network players. And so that means force people onto accounts. Like, on PC. Uh, I, it's a, I feel like it's as shallow as that. I actually don't think there's really anything more to that. I think it's legitimately number go up, therefore engagement is good. Even if people are still playing the same game, you could just look at Steam charts if you want to know how many people are actively playing, you know, Helldivers at any point in time. You don't need your own, you know what I mean? You don't need to, to run PlayStation Network accounts and do your own metrics like that. The, the numbers are right there. Um, obviously as well, there may be more analytics you get out of a PlayStation Network account, like you can start sending stuff and connecting it to, you know, a person who also plays on PlayStation. You know, maybe there's that. Um, maybe there's other things like that. Uh, there are certainly, um, grounds for data analytics collection as well, I guess. Um, I personally do not play anything that uses a PlayStation Network account that's not out of, uh, a moral standpoint, that's just literally, I don't have a PlayStation, and I don't really have any, you know, any meat to, to play that uses a PlayStation Network account. Um, but certainly, uh, yeah, if, uh, if it's like, uh, my, um, I've got a, a, an EA account, and I'm very, very upset about the amount of things that I actually realized were stored on my EA account. For example, um, every single IP I've ever used uh, since 2008 to log in to Origin or EA or EA Download Manager as it used to be in the past or EA Play, um, my Microsoft account credentials because I used those to link to EA Play at some point, uh, the exact timestamp of every single purchase I've ever made as well as key activations for the things that I bought through Steam. Also on top of that, uh, the IP addresses that I had at that time, except um, not the stuff I use Steam for. They didn't give me an IP address on that. So, yay. Very, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Steam. You did one thing. I don't know how much stuff Steam has on me. Probably a ton as well. Um, uh, on top of that, they have my billing address for all of these old purchases, which means, in theory, if someone were to leak EA's databases, just like how there may have been various PlayStation Network leaks in the past, including, I think, September last year. Um, in theory, someone can know my name, my screen name, my birth date, various, uh, you know, addresses that I've lived at, my IP addresses at multiple points of time, um, and, uh, more, most embarrassingly, my, uh, Battlefield Heroes name. Dude, I don't want to leak that, man. That's, that's the worst. Um, oh, I saw like the, the there was like a free-to-play Tiger Woods PGA game back in the day. I didn't even remember this existed. Oh my gosh, that guy is on fire. Um, I didn't even remember that there was a, a free-to-play golf game, like in the span of uh, all of EA's free-to-play endeavors. Um, it's, I was like, oh yeah. I do remember Need for Speed World. Um, which shamelessly copy-pasted the map from Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005. And they called it a new game. I heard it had some okay, like, new events, but I don't know. Um, so... I could certainly think of uh, the data privacy angle as being very, you know, pertinent. Um, it's definitely an unknown, and obviously as well, uh, these companies... I'm about to... yep, I'm about to lose it all. Here's the thing, if I can keep it rolling for a moment, because I know I want to grab the goodies, if I can keep it rolling for a hot moment and get to the end of this dungeon, then I can actually hit a church and a save point. Um, there is conveniently a church in save point right at the end, and right before the end of the, like, the last dungeon of the game. Um, and uh, that's where I really want to get to. Of, of course, you know, the more oh, that is a proper dragon, by the way. <laughs> we had a dragon sword. It's strong against dragons. And here you go. Here's the moment you can finally, you know, benefit from that sword that I've stopped using. <laughs> dragons are definitely, uh... I don't think they hit the hardest, but they do have Firebane. They're going to be some of the meaner ones. But they've definitely got some of the most uh, health out of any enemy. That's not too bad. Um, reason number three, uh, I've also seen for, um, uh, 
requiring a, a PlayStation Network account is um, this uh, endeavor to keep communities not toxic and effectively ban people for misbehavior in one game across an entire service. So say for example that, uh, you know, you were caught, um, or like let's say you're playing Helldivers 2 and uh, someone calls you a stinky doo-doo head and you call them a poopy poop poop. These were the chests by the way, I died just before accessing before. Uh, this shield, and some money. Do not equip the evil shield. I went all this way just to- Oh, There's four dragons! There's four of them! Ooh! <laughs> okay. We did it. This- this is the dragon quest. We have found the dragons. They were all here. I'm gonna try my best. I don't know about this one. How was that second one? Like, way more damage. Um... Okay. Oh. Keep yourself alive. I think Nana's gonna cop this one. I don't know. Okay, Nana cop that one. What a what a hilarious encounter. Just oops, all dragons. <laughs> okay, so um it's good experience though. I, I I need it on my main guy at least. I'm not too fussed about people dying and not getting experience because someone gets the experience and that's all that matters. But uh, yeah, no, we need to like um, properly make our way out of the dungeon now. Um, I was kind of close before in in some way. So back on this floor, if you head all the way over to the east side, I'll try my best. I'm not. Gonna, I don't think I'm gonna make it. But uh. We head over to the east side, we, we went up to this one, like, floor with all these, like, holes. And if you can manage to walk your way up to the very northmost part of the room, then you can, uh, you know, reach a staircase and actually leave the place. Um, but yeah, I'll probably not make it, and I'll probably have to revive some people and take another crack, but that's okay, because that's just how the cookie crumbles, I guess. Um... Man, I am spending a lot of time in this dungeon, though. I'm getting caught out a ton. Uh, is it because I don't aggressively use my magic and I keep preserving it a bit too much? Maybe. Am I underleveled? Also, maybe. Um, so, yeah, so... I don't think it's... Like, this is also not a good thing for consumers. Like, I don't think being banned from uh, one game um, really necessitates banning from other games. You may appear toxic in one game, but like be completely not toxic in other games, and also games that really you can't be toxic in, or grief in, or whatever. There's like, like, uh, my brain was gonna say Gran Turismo, I don't know Gran Turismo, you can suddenly, like, be very, um, uh, unsportsmanlike, I guess? Um, I don't know if the game already, like, accounts for that. I feel like it does. Um, maybe. Uh, but, uh, I got like a heater on to keep myself warm in the cold 15 degrees Sydney weather that's happening. Um, okay, I'm done with this guy healing. Can he stop? Please. There he- well, I guess he can definitely stop now. There we go. I have 16 health. I'm not gonna make this, but I'm just curious if we can do it. <laughs> There we go, uh, so, there you go, I think you go, like, up here, hit the rock, just kind of keep going, hug it a bit, hug it a bit, oh, no, 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 not up, we're done, we're done, we're done, <laughs> oh, too many dragons, oops, all dragons. <laughs> It's always like this. Oh, I'll take another crack at it. How may we serve you? Uh, please revive. Oh, surely. You jest. Oh, thank you. Money, please. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like, I don't know. I, also, of course, like, clearly, you know, I don't think banning 
players across games really makes your community any better. Also, apparently Sony games still have hackers even on PlayStations. Um, so it's not like it's a perfect system. I don't think it's even, I don't, I don't think it's good enough to say as a, really an advertising point. Um, it's obviously an endeavor, an endeavor people do, you know, you want to ban hackers and generally corral your more unruly members, uh, but, uh, yeah, nah, like, I, I don't feel better because of that, because also people just buy alts, people just smurf, you know, stuff like that. Nothing stops the smurfs, unless you do IP bans, and you don't want to do IP bans, <laughs> they're not gonna, no one's gonna be happy about IP bans. Back in the dungeon we go! Welcome to the dungeon! That's... that's it. Uh... But yeah, I think those are, like, the three reasons, maybe, why a PlayStation Network account might seem like a good thing, according to someone at Sony, someone at PlayStation. Um... Obviously, to a game... Uh, to a customer... If it worked fine without a PlayStation Network login, it makes no sense to suddenly require it, and... Whatever, like, people dismissing and saying, Oh, it's only two minutes, what, you know, what's the harm? The harm is all those things that clearly act against players, and, well, except for the... The, <laughs> the, the one that uh, is, is just like, we want to look good to shareholders, that's not really bad for players, but it's just... You know... You, you, you don't get to necessarily just capitalize off me one extra step, even if there's really nothing insidious about that. It's just like, you know, you're asking me for the favor. I don't know. Uh, so, I think out of principle, we should question, why on earth does a game suddenly require this kind of stuff? Um, this, uh, is, uh, I guess, um got complicated because apparently several regions do not actually let you use a PlayStation Network account. Uh, when you try to sign up for one, it prompts you, hey, what country are you in? And you can put in your country. Uh, me, as an Australian, I can go in. But also, me, as a native Antarctican, on many, many other services, if I can, I'd like to flaunt my original heritage of Antarctica. Um, <laughs> and uh, PlayStation Network is not available in Antarctica. So if you live in Antarctica, sucks to suck. You can't make a PlayStation Network account unless you lie about where you are. Several people apparently reported that uh, they were then IP banned on their um, on their accounts via the PlayStation Network account because they incorrectly put in the location they were in. Um, they would say they were in uh, you know, the United States. They clearly weren't, and you know, hijinks ensue. They're uh, suddenly now banned. Um, uh, that, that that is, I mean, is it against the terms of service? I guess, I guess, of uh, of that site. But is it also like, yeah, like these people owned the game, and now they cannot play the game because of the country they're in. Therefore, why was the game available to purchase? This caused Valve to take a very very strong stance, which is uh, the game itself was restricted in very, very many regions, although I, I noticed China wasn't one of them, and I don't know if PlayStation Network is available in China. Not because Sony doesn't offer it, but because I think China itself doesn't want people to... I, I think that's the case. Like, I think it's just it's behind the firewall. Um, so I'm not sure if, like, them not having banned it in China is, like, actually meaningful. I don't know, maybe they just never were able to access it anyways. Um, Japan was a weird one, though. That made me wonder, like, is this, like, legit? Because... Can you not make a PlayStation account in Japan? That seems quite odd. Um, but whatever the case, uh, yeah, Steam acted upon it and basically geo-blocked a lot of countries from even trying to purchase the game. For the sole reason of, they can't play it, why are they allowed to buy it? And very on top of that, uh, Valve then took the stance of, we're accepting refunds for anyone who is uh, affected by this, which uh, seemed to count for a lot of, like, uh, I don't know how many people exactly refunded, um, but certainly given the, uh, you know, the hard, everyone's writing negative reviews because, 
hey, they're requiring a, a, an account login and they never required it before and it's, you know, it's like, why? Uh, do I believe, yeah, do I believe it's overblown? I guess in the sense of, you know, if they, if the game launched with the PlayStation Network feature, there would be no, not much of a, of a hubbub. I feel, um, and it's because many other games have third-party accounts, obviously, as, as well. Like, it's not like you're signing up to some, uh, otherwise dodgy site. This is a, this is PlayStation. This is, you can trust PlayStation, can't you? Um, in the same way as, you know, if you want to play Halo the Master Chief Collection, you need to log in with a Microsoft account in order to play, uh, I think I saw someone say, like, Rainbow Six Siege, um, you know, you have a, uh, you know, a Ubisoft account, there's, you know, everyone's got accounts for everything. What's the problem? Well, the problem is, yeah, I guess these data breaches and the excess of information on them. And generally, do I win by having multiple accounts of things? Not really. Really, all you want me to do is identify that I am a person. And I'm the same person every single time. And that's it. Back in, back, back in my day, <laughs> when, uh, when we had, um, you know, like, Nothing more complicated than a Nintendo DS. Uh, the Nintendo DS um, didn't need accounts. It lit. Ooh, we got a robo sir. We've seen one of these guys before as well, haven't we? I think so. Dude, they're really like they're sending out the enemy. The worst part as well is like we got another dungeon. You know they're gonna send out something just like that tad bit harsher on us as well. I think this guy actually should be okay, but I did get a crit on him the first time. This is a, a bit cruel. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Don't kill him in one, one turn, please. I mean, I'm still gonna hopefully get my way out of here and we'll be, we'll be hunting. God, he's dead. Oh, 41. Oh my gosh. He can't live. <laughs> he really can't live, can he? I do remember this game was like, oh, I do remember this game was fairly brutal near the end, but uh, oh boy, we're not even in the last dungeon yet. Where's my metals, my liquid metal slimes, bro? I need them. All right. Anyway, walk over to here. Uh, hug the bottom row because there's apparently a hole somewhere on the top. Head down these stairs. Uh. And, uh, you are... Oh, wait. Oh, wait, no, I'm in the wrong part. No, I'm in the wrong part. I know I'm in the wrong part as well. Oh, did I really wander over to the top and then, uh, air quotes goof it up because I've just wandered to the wrong side of the floor? I think I have, though. Oh, well. Um... So yeah, anyway, people people review bombed it on Steam, which I think rightly so. Like, this this does suck, I guess. It, even if it's not much, it does suck. And especially okay. Some I think I saw as well, some people saying, oh, you know, like it was always in the terms of service, and you bought the Sony, the Microsoft, sorry, the um the published game, the PlayStation published game, and you didn't expect to make a PlayStation account one, you stupid. It says in the terms of service, right there. And it's, that's just gaslighting. I'm very. I think people showed that, like, no, it did. It did not say that in the past. They added it in, which gets me also onto the point again of what happens when a game changes its terms of service. I'm gonna say specifically games, um, just for this conversation. I feel like it'd get very confusing if uh, there were, um, you know, like other kinds of software and other subscription kinds of services in there. But let's just talk about, you know, the traditional. You buy a game. And, uh, it's, it's there, it's, it's a game, you can, you know, play it, I guess. And then suddenly, terms of, well, first of all, you have to agree to the terms of service the first go, right? Um, I'm gonna call the Mega Bams first, I feel like they're gonna be meaner. And you can do a one-hit kill, kind of, easily. This is gonna be very, very mean. Man, I, like absolute cop. Oh, she might actually. Oh my gosh. 
Do you like that double attack, by the way? It gets the ability to double attack at times. And to not be affected by anything. Oh, nice. It's a, it's a chunky amount of experience, but man, the amount of, like, blood, sweat, and tears I'm going through. So, anyway, here's the stairs. I found them the first time. You want to just, like, casually walk around here. Then there's a staircase. This is... Oh my gosh, are we reaching salvation yet? Am I there yet? <laughs> oh, am I actually there yet, or...? Oh wait, no, I'm not actually there yet. This is this is another kind of maze bit, and it loops around in a bit of an awkward way as well. And I still gotta make my way past this. I'm just gonna try and flee. We'll just try and wing fleeing as much as I can. I have a map up because legit, this place is just gonna get kind of annoying otherwise. Oh, this... let me flee more. Thank you. <laughs> I head up to the top here. If you wanna go up the right and a bit more around. I definitely know I'm gonna fight at, at least like two more groups in the way, because this is still this is still going on a fair bit. If I'm lucky. If I'm lucky I've got this, but oh there we go. I'm just like, I'm just like in silence, but I know I'm gonna cop it. I know I'm gonna cop it. Nah. Nah. Ah! <laughs> How could you have died? You are so bad. How could you have died? Granted, I did go the wrong way, and then I copped it, because now I'm fighting, like, you know, hordes of very, very strong guys, but... Even then, it's like, oh my gosh, like, Art just cops it all the time. It's not like I was putting defense seats on him and it still wasn't enough. Ah, oh, we'll take another crack, we'll take another crack. We'll take another crack, we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, yeah, I mentioned these other games as well that have like these, um, these things, but yeah, what happens when a game changes its terms of service on you? Um, well, from what I can tell, there has been absolutely no precedent in courts anywhere about what happens when a one-off purchase, and especially for something that generally is analogous to just any kind of personal media, um, and I guess because it, it is personal media, it's like it's like buying a CD. It's not like you buy a CD only to like eventually have the, you know, oh, you can only use that CD like five times, and then we, you know we prevent you from. It's like, bro, no, you've got the copy of the thing. You should be able to use that thing to whatever extent you want. Uh, I mentioned weeks ago. This has been muddy. Maybe I didn't actually. No, I think I did. Um, this has been muddied by things like the DMCA because the DMCA has a clause in it which prevents. Um, circumvention. Like, like if you have a program and someone can run the program, you know, it's, it's not illegal to reverse engineer the program or emulate it, for example. But if your program requires a key from a hardware device, like a console, and someone just goes, oh, well, I, I can try to provide that key, you are now breaking copyright law all of a sudden in the US. Just the US, it's not, not here, it's, it's, it's absurd for that, for that reason. Um, but you're breaking copyright law. Uh, now, if you go around the code itself to even do that, like for example, if your game, like let's say, um, you know, the, the console BIOS needs to boot, uh, and you write a, uh, a HLE layer that basically ignores even going to the BIOS and just runs game content, Technically, you are now fine again, but it's that weird middle area where you can't emulate like the 
the actual cryptographic. You can't, you can't emulate the security. You can't crack that. You have to somehow ignore it. <laughs> it's very odd. I don't know. So, um, but uh, yeah. As for um, like, I guess like you know, here's a game, and you have to sign an agreement or you know whatever. Like, make sure you've read the terms and conditions before using this. Like. I feel like there's lots of- one, first of all, you bought it first- first up. A lot of games don't have the most accurate terms and conditions on websites, and ironically the one in the game is the one that's binding and also the one that you would need to buy the game in order to witness, and then it's like, hey, if you don't agree, the game turns off. I actually test this in quite a bunch of games I- I play where I'm just like, what happens if I just disagree? And a lot of the times the game just turns off. I saw one where it's like, it goes back to the main menu, just expects you to try again. Never have I seen one legitimately let you use some of it without agreeing to the terms of conditions, which I think is absolutely, like... Oh, I was gonna say absolutely criminal. That sounds excessive. But legitimately, if I buy a video game, let's say, for example, I buy Dragon Quest XI, because I know that it has a term, terms of conditions when you buy it on the Switch. Oh my gosh, why? Which, by the way, they don't prompt you until you play the game. Love that. Um, but uh, let's say you disagree with the terms of service. Why on earth? Do, like I, I understand a little bit. I don't, I don't agree, but I understand a little bit. If okay, you have an online server, you need to somehow negotiate that, like you know, the online server is software as is and all that stuff. You know, you, you, we can't run this forever. Just make sure that you know these are these are the agreements. Sure. If you disagree, and we say, okay, well, you can't use the online server, the rest of the software should be okay, right? I bought a Switch game. It should generally have all the same, just, you know, as is, I don't care, you know, license that I can personally use this game for whatever I want. Uh, you know, just, well, I'm completely personal, you know, like that kind of stuff. Um, and like, that's it. There should be no whatever. But the fact I have to agree that before I start using a game in a completely offline use case, I have to agree that I won't wreck your server and I won't hack you and that I need to send inquiries to this place and any kinds of, you know, like, uh, you know, microtransaction content is, you know, completely up to the jurisdiction of the, of the, the store and, you know, uh, this you know, agreement is void if only I and not them change the terms, because if they, you know, they're free to change the terms whenever, which means also, uh, <laughs> you know, what what am I agreeing to? I'm, ag I'm agreeing to them to do whatever later on, which means nothing right now. None of, like, that, I, that's why I feel like none of this is really legally binding as well. I think there's been some specific cases that have been looked at where, you know, they go, okay, a user is not, like, ever expected to have read this, so therefore, it's not binding. But I don't know if that's ever been applied to games. Um, but legitimately, I feel like a lot of these games have end-user license agreements that are so overbearing and so anti-consumer to the point that no sane person would really be agreeing to this had they not been coerced very strongly into, no, you gotta play this game, man, or you're missing out, or that kind of stuff. Uh, or, I've already bought the game, and I'm financially now invested into seeing the fruits of the product. Uh, like, it's, it's so absurd to me that, like, you know, and, and there's, there's bound to be other things like this. I think a lot of software is probably in the same boat. I think I saw one, someone say, every time you download a, uh, a software update, like an OS update from uh, from Apple, you have to implicitly be reading and, uh, and agreeing to a license agreement that changes every single time there's an update. There's always something different about it. Um, and, you know, it may be at some point where it's like, hey, I, I void the right to somehow, you know, prevent EA from taking my IP address all the time. Uh, or use tracking pixels on their analytics platforms, which they do. As well as also noting my screen resolution, browser, uh, system hardware at various points in time. You know, like, all this stuff, which really, really, really is identifying information and under no circumstance would I be willingly giving that out to people. 
Like, yeah, I know, I guess, you know, if you were stalking me, you could profile a lot of that if you had access to, you know, to send software to my computer. I guess, you know, what can I do to stop it? But I never agree to that. Someone would be like, oh, but you did click the button. It's like, yeah, I, I made an account back in 2008. I haven't read any single software, like, experience since then. Also, I, I was like, 12! Someone's gonna say, like, oh, collecting information about a miner? Yeah, I, yeah okay. <laughs> I, are, are, we, are we going with that as well? We could, we could grill them on that, actually, if we wanted to. I can't believe my fire spell doesn't work on fire enemies. I'm not even up to the floor yet, by the way. I'm still kind of, like, just meandering around, but, uh, oh boy. Oh boy. It's just, like, art just coughs, like... A bunch of hits. It's because you, you can't do like a party order as well. Like I know Final Fantasy gets around this where um you can have characters in the back and if they're in the back they deal half melee damage but they also take half melee damage. And that generally is what you'd use for like your healers or anything that you really don't want to actually have in the front. Um, I'm so surprised it keeps taking like 30 damage for everything so um but yeah, also, yeah, like, like, do these companies have any responsibility, like, responsibility as to, like, information about, like, young people? I, I guess, I, I think EA does have a clause for that. Alright, we're back to this floor, by the way. It's really not that far. I just went the wrong way. Twice. Let's just make sure everyone is on, like, full health, because I do not trust anything about this floor anymore. <laughs> It's such a trek as well! Dragon, dragon, fight the dragon, Dragon Ball Z. But, yeah, nah, this stuff makes my blood boil a little bit. Uh, like, oh my gosh, and he dodged main character attack. That was from full health to nothing in one turn, by the way. Art can't survive anything, I tell you. Oh my gosh, he dodged two! He dodged two. <laughs> but, yeah, this end-user license agreement stuff really does make my blood boil because, like, this... Ultimately, to go back to the Helldivers thing, um... So, uh, specifically, the PlayStation Twitter did announce, um, earlier today, so, uh, seven and a half hours ago, because I've been talking about it for half an hour. Um, they announced that they will, uh, not go ahead with this update, and, you know, New players won't be expected to do PlayStation accounts. Old players won't be expected to do PlayStation accounts. Problem solved. Um, which, in terms of has any damage been done, apart from reputation and trust, is a, is a different enemy. I guess it's Silver Devil, but it's the Ag Devil. Ag... Well, that's a bit mean, ain't it? Yeah, there's a Firebane, which is gonna be a little mean, if I can't hit with a main character. Because he probably isn't too strong. Yeah, he's, he's not that bad, but it's just... <laughs> was asleep! Burning through this magic, but I don't care. I need to get the heck out of here! But I've never had Repel do anything. Oh my gosh, this is a runaway moment. Yeah, but <laughs> there are some encounters I can wing, but three dragons is uh, too much effort right now. This isn't really any better though, is it? 
this up, but let's try and take out this robo. Uh... I mean, it's just gonna take like two hits from the main character. Oh, okay, we're good. The Berserker hits a bit, but... Uh, but yeah, so the the course of action has been reversed. Uh, fortunately, there will be no, you know, no impact. And other than, you know, people, again, not trusting, uh, you know, PlayStation and Sony, uh, which, mm, yeah, yeah, I guess this is probably, you know, this is going to last a bit. Also, as well, the Helldivers community are very dedicated and, uh, <laughs> The whole point of the game is to band together against singular threats, and casually it's like, ah oh yes, let's just apply that to real life. You know, like, like props to them for uh, being completely in the spirit of uh, making things right, because, uh, you know, they were vocal about this, and I, you know, I'm very, very appreciative of that. Um, what I would love is for now to keep... To keep the ball rolling, I know it's very hard to retroactively go back to a bunch of these old games, uh, like Rainbow Six Siege is going to be a very tricky one to just suddenly go, hey, yeah, you know, I bought the game on Steam. I want it to be, uh, you know, like, if I say illegal, that's a stretch, but like, I want it to be, uh, you know, uh, these games to not require, uh, you know, a Ubisoft account now. And it's like, I, to some degree, I know it would be tricky to take a game that has always been you know, running on Ubisoft stuff and always requiring Ubisoft accounts and things like that. Um, and also, it does not use Steam in any way. If you buy the game on Steam, it's basically a wrapper around registering the game on Uplay and then having a Uplay account go for it. Um, do I believe that, yeah, you know, maybe try and use Steam if you can, but, uh, or really, you know, anywhere where you sell the game. If you want me to only use one storefront, then you know, sell the game only on one storefront. Even as much as we rip into Epic Games, uh, when they took down Fall Guys and Rocket League off, uh, off Steam, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm very certain those games still work, even to this day, off purely Steam accounts. They don't actually require an Epic Games login even to this day, even if you can't play it with new accounts. They have grandfathered in the old accounts. Um, so yeah. Uh, by the way, welcome to, uh, Snowland, or the Death Island of Rome. That's what this is called. These are gonna absolutely kill me, by the way, if I don't flee from every single encounter I can, just for the hot second. We need to get all the way over here, and then I need a wing, a bit of forest, just to get one step away! One step away! One step! Okay, good, we're good, we're good. Finally, okay, we're safe, we're safe, we're safe, we're safe. Welcome, Bundo. Let the light of the gods shine on descendants of Brave Lotta. Free heal. He also saves. So, with the save, this means that if I die, I'm back here. Also, this is a gate that actually transports to just before that last dungeon, so... Um, yeah. But, uh, it does mean that now, also, uh, free heal also means free revive as well, so don't have to worry about that. Um, but it does mean also that, uh, I'd probably need to go back down if I want a, a world leaf at some point, mm, I guess. Uh, we're gonna be dealing with, a uh, Blizzard, because I was talking about how bad I hate launches and, you know, accounts on all these other sites. At least, okay, at the very least as well, Battle.net also doesn't sell the game on any other platform. You can, I guess you can buy it retail, I guess you can even account, but, um, you know, at the very least it's like, okay, well, Battle.net's accounts are exclusively in Battle.net, and they're not tracking any weird, well, except you can connect your Discord to Battle.net, and you can probably connect, like, Twitch, I think, to that, yeah. Always be wary about connecting your accounts to other sites as well, like, really, what do you gain about it? Check your Discord, by the way, if you've, uh, Connect to things like your Microsoft account, and it's like, ah, yes, you know, the thing that I log into my computer with. Actually, be, be sane as well. If you use a Microsoft account to log into your computer, see if you can reinstall Windows and then set it up without a Microsoft account. 
It's possible, but I don't know why. They make it harder and harder to do that. I would just love to click a button and then name password. That's just local. That's it. Nothing fancy, so... Um... Anyway, yeah, so we got lots of, like, new enemies up here on this, uh, this, this here island over here. Um... As well as also, uh, lots of weird... kind of... routes where... I don't know why... <laughs> why this mountain is doing this. Why does it circle around like this? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> these bat demons, they're like demons, but bats. Also, Art's about to cop in, I didn't quite realize that. Also, I'm about to cop in, I didn't quite realize that. Very nice. But, uh, yeah, this is where all the, the strongest enemies in the game really will lie. Um, these, uh, yeah, these bat demons, which hilariously as well, they're not even the strongest ones of these demons. I mean, we saw the, the, um, the silver one earlier, who had, uh, 89 health, uh, or so. These guys have 138, but... If I could take them out without copping it, um, they give good experience, and a lot of these enemies start to give fairly good experience, like, oh, wait, hold on, oh, you gotta heal them, man, you gotta heal them, what are you doing? <laughs> you can't just revive me and then let it there. Um, but, uh, yeah, those guys give 542 experience. Uh, the blizzards give 412 the, um, the metal, uh, bots, uh, from the last room, not really that much. Uh, these guys, uh, we saw the Cyclops earlier? I think I just completely ignored him, but this is also a giant, this is 580, uh, is that, uh, oh, what is this, the, the Ark Demon? Do we have, do I have that written down? Um, yeah, this guy is... 1,475 if you can take him out. And of course, there's always a chance for a metal, a liquid metal slime at some point, so... you still got maybe a bit of a... bit of chance to, to get there. Um... But I may be in the, in the realm... well, one, it really doesn't help when Art just keeps copping it. As well, he's also copying the melee attacks. Like... This Arc Demon is certainly going to take a fair bit of, you know, just grunt to take down, though. A crit would be nice, but, uh, there you go. Uh, the Gigantes has 175 health, so he's not exactly small either. Um, probably, I'm probably going to... Man, my goal is that maybe we'll beat this game, but uh, I'll probably be stuck here for a bit. Just going, ah yes, I need more experience. This is probably the most egregious amount of, ah, yes. Like, it's weird as well. Was any of the rest of the game like this? But the experience is good for those two enemies. It's just that uh, I got none of it, you know, as we do. I just keep saving, keep just trying, you know, again and again. And that's only if people die, you know. Well, okay, we got the same fight again. Uh, okay, let's start going aggressive on, you know, using Firebane, because that does hit everyone. I might as well be using that. Someone's probably gonna have been going like, why have you not been- Well, okay. One turn, man. One turn. One turn. I can't believe it. Dude, he's gonna be like a sitting duck the whole time anyways. <laughs> Uh, this may be uh, about to cop me of a fight as well. <laughs> like, I'm just going like, I haven't taken out any of them, and uh, they're still going hard on me. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get anywhere, man. We didn't get anywhere. <laughs> uh, we'll keep fighting, we'll keep getting there. Uh, uh, look, look with that slime though. 
Dang it. <laughs> that was worth a try. Alright, let's let's get that fireball or firebane. Um, increase as well would also be nice. That uh adds defense. Actually, I might as well just use that considering he keeps dying in like one hit, you know? Um, and then uh, defense is also a, a down defense, so... Uh, yeah, this might actually be kind of the strat, rather than just, oh, I'm dealing damage, I'm going for it. He loves copper fair bit of damage though, doesn't he? I wouldn't mind like a Sage's Stone though, you know? It's from later Dragon Quests and it's just like a, an item that effectively is like a, a mid heal or a heal more on everyone in the party and you could use it over and over and over again and it's always available just before the end of the game. But uh, in this game, it doesn't exist. If I can just go for it, I guess. My favorite, my favorite level from the Plutonia experiment. Oh no, that was a TNT evolution level, wasn't it? Just keep going on that fire bane. It's kind of fun when you don't have. Oh, it's exploding. And I, I missed an attack. Very nice. And no one was affected. Also very nice. I hate my existence, oh no. Oh, he copped it! He copped it! No! That was a very unfortunate miss, because he would have survived and gotten a bit of experience had he, had he lasted. Yeah, I, I can hit these guys in two hits, it's not too bad, but... Oh, two hits are freaking hurt. Oh, I'm, I'm riding the line right here, I didn't realize he attacked twice as well, okay. It's good experience, 2000, but... Uh, <laughs> again, not for, not for the Prince of Canic. he's just copping it! He's just copping every single one! Like, we're now at the point of game as well, like, you know, 2,000 experience of battle is actually, like, fairly good, but, like, look at him, he's 20,000 less! Or 18,000. He's really, really struggling. Re yeah, so remember, 2,000 experience of battle, max level, if you really, 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 really grind it, is a million experience for every single character. So starting to get, like, you know, like, off that, off that one demon, you get 1,475. It's excessive, but if you can, you know, stick with it and fight, uh, you know, I guess like, what, 600 of them? <laughs> I guess you max out. Um, also as well, there are some stronger enemies in the dungeon that I still haven't wandered quite into, so. Uh, there's more to, to see. this giant in one turn. Almost. <laughs> I feel like Firebane would have got me through that dungeon a bit easier as well. <laughs> oh my, oh my gosh, you, you defeated enemies for once. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. Uh, I think it is pretty much that one demon is very, very, you know, he's a bit of a jump. else is really, really that bad, so... Anyway, yeah, yeah. So, uh, moral of the story is with the Helldivers stuff. Uh, one, community backlash works. Uh, I saw people say bullying works. I, I guess bullying works, but, like, in particular, companies, like, obviously will do things that are in their interest and not in the, per like, the consumer's interest. This is generally more a thing with... Ah, uh, ha, ha. 
<laughs> I, giants are typically wants to do that, by the way. They will typically have these just, ah yes, everyone dies, kinds of attacks. It's a bit cruel though, <laughs> it wasn't it? It was like, Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, typically publicly traded companies are much more likely to do silly things because publicly traded companies quite often don't actually have the money. Like, they have investor money, but investors can choose to pull out, and if investors choose to pull out, if every single investor chooses to pull out, the company doesn't really mean anything. Also, for an for investor to, to pull out, he sort of has to, well, I guess he pull stake, but... You could also just, you know, sell for less, but that reduces, you know, value, and eventually, you know, a company is just not worth as much, and then, okay, capital's not there, and stuff disappears. Privately traded companies, it's all internal. You don't know really how much money they have, or make, but at least it's their money. You know, like, if, a, if they're gonna die, it's gonna be very, very blatantly obvious, and it's not like, oh, you know, they, they don't have to appease anyone. Um, Valve is... Uh, very, very well loved, uh, but I also think Valve in particular have held a great standpoint of just don't, like, screw over the customer. Holy crap, guys, how easy is that? And yeah, I, no, yeah, I think that's actually, like, the strat, which is, I, I know, it's like, a, a thing, but like, Valve is, uh, is very notorious for having a platform that literally is just, like, not bad. Am I about- is Art about to cop it? One of them has an attack, I don't know which one. Oh, oh he's riding the line. He's riding the line. Oh. Why is that just not hitting him? Is he, is he just like that? Is he just not like getting hit by some, something sometimes? Oh, but Nana copped it. Ah, oh, rip. Very close. Yeah, even if I'm upset about, like, oh, how much, like... Ah! <laughs> the Devil Sword! I was like, I was like, there are no better weapons. Well, okay, there is the Devil Sword. The Devil Sword, um, cannot be equipped by the Princess, but it can be equipped by, uh... You know, both of the both of the princes, Prince of Mindenhall and Prince of Canic. Um It uh it has way more attack, but it curses you. And uh the curse causes you to miss quite often. Um it ends up not really being worth it, but because the damage is actually insanely good on this weapon, uh the Prince of Canic doesn't actually I mean well, the light blade is pretty good as well. I'd probably say the light blade is the reason why, and also I've just been casting 5 aim anyway, so it really doesn't matter what I equip, but um, uh, but uh, sometimes you see like a bit of a glass cannon build try to go that route. Um, also because the Prince of Canic can't equip that many things in the original version, um, it's also useless because you can't equip it in, that, in the NES version as well, so like it's, it's not like, it's not like, oh, you know, maybe it's worth it in another, mm. Really, really cutting it. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. It might be okay to sell though. I think it's kind of hilarious. I got one. Oh my gosh, he leveled up. So I, at least it'll be a little more uh, resilient. Oh, I got another one. I got another one. Okay, right, that's the one thing that kind of sucks about being up here though. There is no um, bail. The, well, I uh, sorry, there is a bail, but like, as in. As in, uh, hold on, like, I got a copper sword. You just gotta chuck things. You just gotta throw them out. Like, if you die, you know, there is no bank here. If, if you wanna cash out your money, you're gonna have to head down below, but then also, like, what do you spend money on? It's not even like, you know, you need items. You know, like healing items or stuff, because it's like, all the healing items are like the basic herbs that are just so slow. It's so slow, you know? So the only thing I can really get is just, you know, the... the mink coat for the Prince of Canada. That's really the only thing I can buy. And, uh, and a hat. 
Uh, it's usually this encounter that I cop it at, but I'm gonna take another crack at it. Uh, actually, instead of that, let's uh, chuck the increase to start off, and then... Defense the Arcling, I guess. I don't know if this is really gonna help me out, I don't know, we'll see. Play, play in the defense for the moment. Oh, it's exploding. Oh, I dropped my defense. I don't think this is going to work out. Oh, I got the demon. I got the demon. Okay. Main character's dead. This is uh, going to be a very, very curious fight. Enough firebanes could actually make this work, but... I actually think maybe one more might actually make this okay. I don't know, we'll see. Hey, you did it! Oh my gosh, another devil So, What's the rate on that? <laughs> Oh, hold on, I'm actually looking up what's the rate on the Devil's Lord, because that's insane. Gigantes. We're gonna rely off the, the wiki on this one, I don't know. Uh, in the remakes for Dragon Quest 2, the Devil's Lord, that's a 1 in 8 chance. <laughs> getting, getting three of those just seems a bit uh, hilarious. What should they sell for? Let's, let's give it a check. That seems to be my most common encounter as well. Uh, Dragon Quest 2... Oh my gosh, hold on, you can sell these for 11,250? Whoa. Also, I'm about to, about to cop it real hard. Oh. You know, now I don't feel that bad about, like, I mean, I, okay, I, I gotta drop something else in my, in my inventory. Copped it, though. I'll tell you. How could you die? <laughs> oh, I gotta heal. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's drop something else in the inventory. What do I not need? I picked up an iron helmet, did I not? Oh, no, that's the one I've got. No, yeah, no, yeah, I picked up an iron helmet. Don't need it. Just need more of these devil swords. That's it. And I know I've got 20,000 sitting in the bank, so I'll just, you know, pick up four of these. I guess I've got enough to pawn them all off for, uh, for, uh, the good stuff. But I probably will still try to level up a bit just to make the trip back a little bit smoother. Okay, it's one guy. It's one guy. We can take him on, can't we? He does attack twice, though, but... And he seems to just completely ignore Bolt and the Firebane. And everything I do is worthless. Two damage. It's not immune to it, he just avoids it. Deal with some of that health. There you go. It's not really a ton of experience, is it, though? Now, I guess here's a question as well. Does the game have its equivalent of a, uh, of a golem in terms of uh, getting more um, money? I guess, other than dropping stuff. And I think the answer is no, not really. I don't think any enemy particularly drops more than 100 gold right now, 200 gold once I get into the... get into the dungeon. 
I would appreciate these fights to be a bit quicker, given that it's just one guy. Like, it feels like it should be very quick to take him out, but because I keep missing, it was kind of annoying before. Like, I really should be able to take him out in, like, one turn, right? That'd be cool. was two turns though. Took its time. Oh, very close. Not close. Pretty close. I, I mean, I know, I guess he just leveled up Prince Mechanic, but still, I want him to level up again. So, yeah, uh, another reference. So, main character can go up to level 50. The Prince of Canic, only 45, and the Princess of Moonbrook, 35. Uh, this, of course, is, you know, just, it's a level. It just means the number of times they get told they level up. It doesn't actually mean, you know, it's all, it's all a million experience. It'll all sort of roughly happen around the same time. Very curious if I can actually, like, win these encounters now. Without anyone dying as well. Very important distinction. That's a mana dying right there. Which actually might be an everyone dying. Oh! Okay. That's a Bundo promotion, but no dice there. So that's now level 24. I think off the top of my head, I either grinded to like somewhere around 30 or 35 on my original NES playthrough. I expect this Game Boy version to be a bit more comforting. Level 50 is just excessive. It's like you really don't even, like you don't even have like, you get double the stats by that point. Um, but you've also grinded so much experience that it's kind of like, well, okay, I guess. <laughs> like, like, I guess it's a payoff, but like, you really, yeah, you really don't need that much, uh, experience. Or that many stats to beat the game. I haven't had a turn, now I get a go. I g Uh, C hasn't been hit in any way yet. Just want to add. Oh, Art's copped it. Uh, did you like, by the way? I missed with my heel. I know that's the same as the bolt, but I don't know, I just wanted to do it for funsies. Yeah, I don't think anything has hit, like, C here. I think he's just been like, yeah, no, I'm dodging everything, apparently. Poison breath, come on, man, that's old school. What are you doing, poison breath? <laughs> oh, that, that was the exact amount of health I needed to not take. Oh, well. So, um... But yeah, I, I hope I can kind of push for some change in the industry in some way. My ramblings and just general interactions. Because I do legitimately think that, you know, all these... Uh, not, not necessarily all these accounts, but like, a lot of these sites are... Oh, sorry, a lot of these um, companies are driven by, you know, some kind of rough KPIs. Like, ultimately, you make game, it make money. That really should be the simplest thing, and exponential growth is tough, and somewhat impossible at times. Um, but yeah, like, all, all you should really be, you know, the thing you should be really worrying about, and especially in a, you know, an age of information, is, you know, making sure that your customers are very, very happy. And that, you know, obviously, of course, it's like, oh, you know, I make these games and I give them out for free. Obviously, you gotta make money, and I get that, but like... There, there is such a very wide, like, you know, uh, there are 
things that can definitely be done that do not hurt the bottom line very much, or in some ways go against the bottom line. Sorry, uh, invert. Sorry, how do I put it? it? You get more return actually if you did if you did compromise on some things because you would have a greater market um, by you know actually having your customers really like your product. That's the reason why Steam, a site that honestly hasn't actually changed a ton, like it's definitely been adding some bits in there. Um, you know, over time, but the actual, like, amount of things that Steam has done hasn't really increased a ton over the past, like, handful of years. But it's just been, like, you know, some small bits here and there. Just the occasional bit, you know, like, a, like, oh, okay, we've added, like, family stuff, and the refunding is a bit more automatic, and, you know, like, the, the review system's okay, and I guess, you know, oh, we added some customization on the page. It's like, if you really had a, a you know, you could definitely, you know, double your team size and totally nail those kinds of features in not much time, or not as much time as what Valve took. But, getting it right, understanding that this is the thing, things that people want, and I know that Valve's missed on sometimes. You remember when uh, they collaborated with Bethesda to do paid mods? I have a whole speech about uh, <laughs> how I, I was like, in theory that could have been okay, but in practice would see, but uh, I know that's a, that's a controversial statement to be okay with paid mods. I only want paid mods in the sense of, like, alongside free mods. I don't want people just selling horse armor to me again, though. I, I want it to be, like, grounds to directly give revenue to people who make good ideas and good mods. That's all I wanted paid mods to be. Uh, obviously, it was not even like that day one, and Valve... Uh, realized that and then, yeah, the, the backlash is sort of insane. We'll pull it, refund, just whatever. Oh. And then Bethesda decided to make their own launcher very shortly after. Does anyone remember that one? And, uh, aren't we glad that Bethesda doesn't care anymore? But they still have logins. Bethesda Net is still a login. We haven't completely gotten back to normal yet. We need to fix that. That's what, that's what I want to push for. I want to push for, like, we don't need account credentials when it comes to just single-player games. Like, Quake 2 does not need a Bethesda Net account login. It doesn't. It plays on Steam. Or even better, as well, uh, have your game use generic tokens inside that go storefront plus account, and then literally you don't need to worry about where someone is playing a game. You literally don't. Because you don't actually need to, like... You just know it's a storefront that's playing the right thing. You might, you know, maybe make it, uh, you know, serializable, deserializable, so you can tell that, okay, there's a handful of stores that are valid, but you still don't need to centralize any of that. Oh, look, another Devil Sword. Do I have anything else in my inventory that I can throw out? Other than a slot token, and that sort of hurts to throw that out, so I think I'm actually, like, just gonna keep it there. At four of these swords, which I think four, four of the swords, I am sure... You know, that's the... <laughs> that should be okay to, to buy the thing, um, once I feel a bit more confident. How about we'll go on for another level, and then we'll go back and buy the... Buy the sword, or buy the, the, the armor. That's kind of fun that you do make a ton of money by getting these swords, though. Oh my gosh, only one enemy, yay! Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I know, <laughs> I always, like, meme about this, but I know, like, some people, like, push, like, hashtags. I don't know what to hashtag push this with, but legit, if you agree with this kind of stuff, I would love, um, just spread the word of, or the, I guess the, like, Spread the, um, the message, I guess? This is, this is my revolutionary ch But, like, you know what I mean? Of, like, just, you know, I, I don't want games to have these, like, stupid logins when they don't need it. And to be tracking extra data that they don't need it. And I don't need these storefronts to be so encroaching. Legit. Okay, okay, uh, extra one as well. Good old games. Great website. Literally, uh, I, I know not everything is DRM free, but the download of the game is DRM free, and that's certainly at least one step in the right direction, because does that really mean that many lost sales? Not really. A lot of people, despite the fact that you can literally, like, 
you know, find the EXE of the installer anywhere, people still buy the game. How does that happen? It's almost as if that, you know, by providing a good service, the customers will continue to come to you. If you make a trash service, you immediately promote piracy. You arguably promote more piracy by just having a bad thing than by making it pricey. I know, right? Like, it's, it's weird. Okay, well, with an explode it, then sure, I guess. Defeat is always mean when you get hit by that. What was, um, I was playing, uh, uh, yeah, Chrono Cross, and yeah, I got hit by that on, like, the, not the final boss, but, like, the hard boss right before, which is effectively the final boss, because, I don't know, to me, to me, the final boss was easier. I thought that was interesting, yeah, that the Chrono, Chrono Cross's, uh, like, final boss at the end of the very, very long dungeon just was easier. And it wasn't even just because I had an extra, you know, star of level, it was like, no, like, it was... I just don't think the final boss had as much health, never mind as well, that, uh, there's two ways of defeating the final boss, and one of them is the actual way, and... That way is also very independent of whatever stats you have, because it's just like, hey, you know. But to defeat the guy right before, very mean. I should have like a like an on-screen percentage. It's just like this is how much experience every character has, and this is how close they are to a million experience. I mean, in, in theory, it's easy to track if I just keep looking at the screen all, all the time, but uh. I know I said I'm going back for the thing. I don't know. I, 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 I'll go to level 24. I'm just like, ah, let's just keep going. Because by 24, he's got, like, significantly more health. I know it's like, oh, you know, like the tens of thousands, 12,000 experience away every time. But it's like, eh, it's only like eight encounters. Sometimes even less. Depends on if I'm fighting those, uh, those Arc Demons. There should be a Agent Arc Demon. I don't know what's going on there. But a fight like this? Nah, it's slow as. Maybe this fight is actually better, though, as I've gotten a few levels, though. The Firebane is just gonna, you know, be a flat amount of damage, but I don't know if it hits more often. Um, but with the main character attacking, he'll definitely... Look at that! One turn! We did it! We're, we're down to one one turn defeats. I just realized as well. I was like, oh, when was the last time I died? Recently. You now, if you want to be silly as well, you could, like, not save when you go down below. And if I died on the way back up, I'd technically respawn up here. I guess I could do that as well, but... Damage 60. Whoa. It'd be kind of sad if he got hit again. Oh, another 60. Oh my gosh. We did take him out in one turn. That's got me more hopeful. It's 
got me more hopeful. The blizzards aren't too bad. They're really not that bad, but... Casting the fence or anything like that is a little bit cruel. Just, just a tad bit. Not a ton bit, but a tad bit. Brave descendants. Constant reminder of how much experience you need. I don't mind it though. <laughs> Other than that, uh, I haven't really been playing a lot in the past week. Uh, one thing I did do, and I know this would be week three of mentioning the Intel stuff, but, uh, uh, I don't think there's really anything to, like, attest to, or really to, like, say on top of the story. Um, but in response, I thought, hey, you know what? I think now's the right time to get a, a contact frame for my 3900 KF. Uh, the... The LGA 1700 socket is rectangular in shape, and the clamp that comes on motherboards, because it's Intel made, um, is a little bit... Mm, it clamps down on the on the long left and right sides, but it doesn't exactly push evenly. This causes the processor to buckle a little bit on the corners, and it's not like permanent damage, it's just like, oh, you know, like... It bends a little bit, because it's being pressed down only in the middle. Um, this, uh, this is not the best for cooling, apparently, on, uh, the processor, because it means when you put your cooler down, uh, you're, you're not exactly, you know, you're pushing thermal paste away or whatever, it's not exactly an even press. Uh, and that just means that the processor will get hot and not transfer the heat as well as it can to the cooler. Um, so what a contact frame is, there's multiple different kinds of brands. I got a thermal right one, because uh, it was fairly cheap, and... It works, I'll definitely say that. Hey, if I'm gonna chill for a product today, I'll chill for that one. That one seems alright. Um, it works, which seems alright. I was originally, you know, thermal throttling at around 230 and 235 watts. Also, always check your, your watts. That seems to just be, you know, the amount of power your processor is making. Or, or is drawing. It needs to dissipate that, you know, that power, because it's gonna turn into heat, so... You know, that's... That should be your metric uh, of like how well your cooler is going, what what power you're drawing through your processor, and how you know what temperature is it, and also what temperature is the room, because ambient. Um, but I'd usually thermal limit at around uh, 230, 235 watts, and uh, with the the frame I can sort of do 275 now, which is very good. This may also have been just I needed a repaste. Uh, because the paste job, when I pulled the, the process, or the, the cooler off, and this was, uh, 15 months ago I did it, um, there was, like, no paste on the top and bottom, it was all in a kind of, like, hourglass shape across the, the clamps, um, which is, uh, <laughs> kind of hilarious to me, because it's just, like, it's just a very dramatic way of showing exactly the thing I described, it was like, oh my gosh, okay, wow, yeah, um, it, it flat out, like, no, it does not, uh, by the way, no, no agility for that level. There's gonna be, like, a ton of agility coming in later, but, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I was shocked to see the, the, the thermal paste do exactly what was described before. I was like, oh my gosh, so, pop the, pop the, the frame on, um, I guess to describe this, the installation, uh, I've got an NHD15 cooler, which is chonky as air cooler. They don't really come any bigger than this. Um, and uh, it's not that bad, actually, to, to take it off, because you just take the two fans off, and then it's two screws uh, to mount the cooler on, and that's just directly down the middle. And then, at that point, you can see the processor, but there's also, like, two kind of um, mounting bars that you've got in the way. You can unscrew those. When you unscrew those, <laughs> Uh, this is an NHD15 thing, so don't worry too much about your particular use case. Um, when you unscrew those, there's a back plate to the cooler, and it comes off. I just unscrewed it, um, so this that. Uh, but I needed to do that in order to get to the, uh, actual clamp for the motherboard, um, or for the socket itself. Um, the actual clamp has four screws. They're kind of star-shaped screws, but the thermal right uh, comes with a, an Allen key, so you can easily just, uh, you know, take that off. Um, 
And it's not too bad, I actually left the processor in the socket the whole time, like I didn't even just pick it up, I was just like, okay, well, unclamp and that's all good. The tricky part came in with, uh, um, the, uh, there's a backplate to the, well, not only to the, the, the NHD, to the Noctua cooler, but also to the, um, uh, to the, uh, to the Intel socket. The screws go through the motherboard and into a little backplate. Um, and, uh, this made me then realize, eh, <laughs> this was a bit iffy. Um, because I had the, the case lying down, and, uh, yeah, the, it kind of fell off a little bit. In my case, I've got a, a, a Lian Lee Lankle too, uh, and, um, the, uh, <laughs> there's a fan controller, like, on a panel, on a metal panel. And, uh, that, <laughs> that was in the way, so I was like, okay, so I had to unscrew that, then the stuff started to fall off, so I was like, okay, carefully, kind of balancing my, my, uh, the case on the table such that I could, re you know, reach underneath and pop the, the back plate in, and then do the, 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 uh, the screws for the, um, for the, uh, for the... Uh, contact frame. I, I got there in the end. I got there. Um, but yeah. Well, the contact frame is just a rectangle, so it's actually not that bad. And they're very nice. It uses the same screws. So, um, it wasn't like, you know, I had to you know, make sure the screws tapped it. It was just like, nah, it was just the same screws. Just take them off, use them on the, the contact frame. So that's all good. Uh, tighten it pretty much to, like, the point that you can't, like, you know, you're pushing against it. At, at that point, once you... You'll feel you're pushing too hard, you're good. You don't need to go any more than that, it's got a bit of a bit of a give that it's good enough, and then you're good. Um, and then, uh, yeah, knock to a backplane on, on the back, pop the cooler back on, redo the thermal paste, and I may have overboard the thermal paste, but I also feel like, yeah, you know, might as well. That's not, since you don't actually have exposed stuff on the, like, um, the IHS side of the, the CPU now, because um, that, that's always like a, an iffy thing about some of these processors is that the stuff on the side that's not going in the socket, the side that's facing you, and you gotta be careful not to like destroy some of that as well. Um, or, you know, if you're doing like, uh, it's fine with thermal paste, because thermal paste isn't conductive, but if you've got like liquid metal, it's like, oh, uh, that's just, that's just mean. Um, in theory, I could sand my IHS, like, I, you know, you can keep going one step further, but the contact frame seemed very straightforward. I don't think it, you know, it doesn't really, you know, there's no permanent, you know, change to your processor. It's just better contact. And, I don't know, it seemed to work out okay. So, yeah, if you've got an LGA 1700, um, I'd recommend the Thermal Right, just because I've used it. The Thermal Grizzly one, I think, also is okay. I hear some people say it requiring a torque screw is like excessive as in it does it does get you slightly more accurate you know tightening but this was very like you can't goof this one up it's pretty straightforward um and i i felt that was the case um and on top of that the thermal grizzly one costs more uh it's not the end of the world but like yeah for me the thermal grizzly one was like 50 australian and this was 18. i could buy three of these and, given that it worked, uh, you know, maybe, maybe there's a slight difference here and there in the performance, uh, but given that it works really well, you know, already, I'd just go with this one. Um, and yeah, seems alright. Seems to, seems to do good. Uh, I'm curious as well if, like, when LGA 1851 comes out at the end of the year with, uh, the Arrow Lake processors, I'm curious if, uh, it needs this, I feel like it might still work, because uh, I realize how many of my, um, how many, like the, like the clamp, for example, uh, has uh, LGA 18XX written on it already. Like, they, Intel knew it was going to be the same size, so that makes sense, but, uh, you know, I guess, I guess at the time they didn't know quite how many pins they were going to be using, and, uh, yeah. But, uh, I, I'm curious if the contact frame is still appropriate. I definitely know they've said that mounting really should be the same. 
Like, you shouldn't need a new cooler. So, perhaps? Maybe? It still works? But, uh, I don't know. We'd see. Uh, not even, sorry, not even the end of the year. Next month! That's the exciting part. Um, I, I'm, I'm always excited for computer hardware. I, I, I mean, here I am, I'm talking about Intel processors three weeks in a row. Um, but I am very, very excited about, uh, Computex, I believe. Which is, yeah, early, like, June 2nd, early June. Um, and, uh, we're gonna basically see, like, all the fun, um, is it Comp oh, was it Computex? Or CES. Did I get it wrong? Computex, Computex, Computex. It is Computex, yes. Okay, I got that right. Um, yeah, and it's like, it's like June 2nd, June 3rd, June 4th. Like, very, very early June. And that's when you're gonna get all the fun consumer electronic uh, announcements. Uh, you know, your, your Intel processors, uh, maybe even your Intel graphics. Your AMD processors, AMD graphics, uh, we'll probably maybe get some NVIDIA stuff, but NVIDIA... Actually, yes, there is an NVIDIA keynote, so... If they don't announce stuff, then, uh, what are they doing? Because they should. That's when AMD are getting some, some stuff out, like... <laughs> I, I mean, they're good, but they're, they're not that good that they can't announce things. Um... But, uh, it'll be good fun. Uh, obviously as well, uh, you know, mentally prep yourself. These are products. Companies have to impress you. Here am I talking about how all these private companies that have, uh, or sorry, all these public companies have, like, investors, and all they're doing is they're just, like, you know, gouging stuff for investors and getting money. And then here I am going, yeah, problems. But, like, legit, like, cool technology is cool. Even if I don't buy it, the fact that someone is making something that does a thing, maybe making it en masse and letting people, you know, who are willing to spend money into it, uh, you know, toy around with that, that's technology to me. That's the cool stuff. So I really, really want to see what is next. The rumor mill right now is that uh, Arrow Lake is going to be um, kind of interesting, kind of odd in terms of its uh, its architecture. I'm, I'm not very hopeful that it actually will outperform Raptor Lake, and uh, that's going to be a big oof because if it doesn't outperform Raptor Lake. It's not going to outperform Zen 5, is it? Zen 5 seems promising enough and is actually offering, or well, hypothetically offering, very, very large uplifts. Again, we'll see. Maybe it's just rumor mill. AMD rumor mills always seem to be very, very optimistic for what they are. And people rip onto Intel and they seem to... Well, at least Alder Lake came out okay, so... People have gripes about the, uh, the P-Course, or the E-Core, you know, business, and that's fair, but, uh... exactly have like anything better than that, but I like how at this point as well, it's like, oh, you know, magic really doesn't mean anything. One, because I'm healing quite often, but also, like, I don't know, like, you're gonna get to this point where, uh, everyone's probably got like 150 magic, and then it's like, eh, it's really not too, not too bad of a, like, of a compromise to just, like, wing 150 magic, you know? Because, uh, I mean, you know, even like the most costly spells is like eight, so it's like, and here I am still using heal more all the time. No, my death fell by one! Uh, as for the graphics card front, um, I feel, uh, very, very optimistic about Blackwell, um, and I know this is me constantly, like, you know, going, hey, NVIDIA, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, love you guys. Um, I do feel like ADA is better than people give it credit for, but yeah, the price is kind of absurd. Let's go back and let's um, buy the, the stuff, by the way. I think I've got enough money for it now. Especially, I got some clean level ups. I like how it puts you here and you gotta kind of, <laughs> you gotta do this for a moment. Very fun, love it. Do I have equipment that actually prevents taking damage off, uh, off 
his main flaws, maybe. So, okay. So let's uh, let's head all the way to uh, well where we're gonna buy the stuff. Let's not worry about it here. Let's uh, go to where it is. So we're gonna head over to Wellgarth, I believe is the place, which is uh, what did they call it, Burrowell. Also, it means I can grab a world tree uh, leaf on the way back, which is gonna be nice. Also, these guys are actually gonna be like no threat anymore. One, because these are not the strong ones as well, but it's like... Yeah, they're in the, like, fleeing from you point. Like, the, the, the jump and difficulty in that one dungeon, and then especially outside, but we're starting, to, we're starting to tame them a bit. It's not as bad now. Where am I? Am I on... am I on the map? Okay, we're good. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm... I'm optimistic. Uh... Is it going to be perfect? I... I don't... I wouldn't guarantee that uh, Blackwell would be perfect, but on the surface... Uh, I'm just gonna run, like, it's, it's obvious what's the outcome here. Um... I'm optimistic it'll be good. Uh, RDNA 4... Mm, might be okay for price, because we're, we're in this weird stage as well, where, like, the new graphics cards are, like, way too expensive. And I know that's like, oh, okay, but, like, as if they're okay price for performance, but the cheapest tier disappeared, and a more expensive... two more expensive top tiers appeared. Like, $1,600 graphics cards have not been particularly common in Australia. And suddenly now we have a three thousand dollar one on top of that. It's it's like it's insane that you know we're at this point. Makes sense, but it's also insane that we're at. All right, we're here. Uh, so let's go. So this is the secret shop. There you go. That's okay. Oh wait, no, sorry. <laughs> that's wait, that's not the secret shop. That's just that's just the guy selling me the key again. I don't want the key. Uh, what would it be? It's the it wasn't you, was it? Oh, was he? Yeah, okay. The fur coat, which will definitely be very very nice for Art. He he needs it. Um, what is he currently wielding, by the way? Yeah, hold on, what is he... What is he wielding? Because, uh... Because this is the, uh, the Aurora Blade. Yeah, hold on, what? I have equipped on that. First of all, let's sell the... the stuff. Uh... In theory, I could sell the Evil Shield, but I'm gonna hold on to it just for funsies. Uh, that also curses you, so... the slot machine. Alright, come on, big bucks! I'll never win this! I will never win this thing, apparently. Uh, yeah, no, where's the... Where's the bank? Was there... Was there never a bank up here? I should've just... I should've cashed out my money, bro. Should have cashed my money. No, there's no bank, really. Oh, I'm sorely disappointed. Yeah, I don't think that's a bank. Nah, no, really. Not even on a different floor. Oh wait, you're not a bank, are you? 
Why? What kind of hotel is this? Okay, well, okay. Gotta go get my money from somewhere and then come back. Dang it. <laughs> always, always ends up like this. fight this guy, but, uh, you know how it do be, even though attacked, dead. 72 experience. <laughs> he did give an okay amount of money, like, 100 is not, you know, it's not fast, but... Uh, let's get that world leaf while I'm at it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not 100% confident about a, uh, RDNA 4 being tons better than RDNA 3, which... Um, weirdly as well, like, uh, I keep seeing the 6950 XT on sale, and the 6950 XT is, like, as good as a 7900 GRE, which is, like, two from the top. At, at least it's two from the top, but it's like, yeah, like, eh, you know, like, they pushed a little bit, but it's not, like, crazy better, RDNA 3. For the price, though, it kept it okay. Um. But, like, yeah, like, I mean, other than the fact that graphics card prices haven't been decreasing, really, over time, and they're sort of just stagnant, and that's just because the demand is insane, um, it's like, yeah, like, the cheapest tier is gone, and, uh, it'd be very cool if there were some, like, really good, like, 300 Australian dollar graphics cards to, like, throw on the market again, just like, you know, like, 1650 Super, my beloved, RX 580, my beloved. There was a bank in here, right? Hopefully. <laughs> I'm gonna find that guy again, though. He wouldn't be ready for it. North! Is it really? <laughs> Is the north where I want to go? doesn't quite look like bank territory as much, though. Like, there was a shop. Hold on, I'll just double check. Is this shop guy a bank? Or no? I, I'm starting to get a bit peeved off that, like, there's places that sell, like, you know, weapons and stuff, and then it's just like, oh, but the bank's not everywhere. If only you could warp to any location as well, then I wouldn't need to keep riding the boat everywhere. Oh, I just realized I could just cast, um, evac as well. I don't even need to go to the dungeon. Like, I don't even need to consider going through. I don't know why I was like, oh, I just gotta die. It's like, I can literally just teleport back there in particular. Before someone says, oh, that you could have taken the, the, like, teleports. I know. I don't know where I'm going with those. <laughs> oh man, this is taking its time, so... Uh, but yeah. Keep your, keep your eyes peeled for cool technology, uh, don't just immediately believe everything they say, always good to, you know, trust but verify, and also, your money's precious, don't impulse buy if you just hear, like, thing is crazy good, because, uh, very likely, as much as I'm like, yeah, you know, cool technology will be cool, um, we all know that day one it's still gonna be, like, more expensive than just the stuff that already existed. Wow, bank. Give me all your gold. Uh, might as well take all 24,000, I guess. And do, can I save an item that I care about, or... Yeah, the... The evil shield. The evil shield should be safe with me. Oh, thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Is 
So now I can buy that armor and maybe art don't, won't die as quick. Maybe art don't die as quick, that's, yes. I gotta defend in case he fights me. I'm still shocked that like, I mean I know I use a, I, I think a life acorn or two on the princess, but I'm amazed that she's got more health, like right now. Because ultimately by the end of the game, uh, I don't think uh, she'll have more health, I think it does like, yeah, she'll be at like 180 and the prince will be at 200. And then the main character is 240, this is funsies. But, yeah, right now, it's like, I don't know, she's chilling with more health. I'm looking at it, I think that does make sense. She just, she just gets more health right now for some reason. But, uh, you know, stats slow out over time, so. Feels good to be able to run away from everyone, though. I just got off the boat. Oh. I see how it is. I see how it is. Okay. <laughs> they they want to fight, I guess. They want to fight. Yeah. Um, other than that, though, yeah, I really haven't been playing too much in the past week. I've been starting to play through Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 for the PS2. I played the PC version, so there's, like, tracks that I recognize, but it's been ages. I've only played it once before. Um, there's definitely bits about the UI and some of the gameplay that is a little different with the PS2 version, though. Like how the police are insanely aggressive. I don't remember them being anywhere near that bad. Like... I don't remember dropping bombs and firing rockets at you all the time from the helicopters. That's just like, oh my gosh, bro. Okay. <laughs> um, they swerve hard, they hit hard, it's very, very brutal. You paid for it, so you get it. Uh, equipment, art, lotto. Uh, oh, he's already got equipped, cool, so he doesn't need the magic anymore. Um, so what is he holding on to as his primary weapon? The Lotto Sword. Is the... hold on, yeah, is the... Yeah, the... yeah, the Aurora Blade would be much better. I keep calling it the Aurora Blade, it's called the Light Sword. It would be much better. Can I actually afford that if I sold this? Um... If I sold the Magic Armor? I'm like a thousand shy. Yeah. And, and and it's like I'm not selling the lotto sword. I'm not getting getting that one. So I'll see if we can make it a little bit of scrounge money just here. I think actually the better strat would be to like maybe go out on the seas, but at least I can you know cast some fire bane and just clear some clear some enemies. But I think that would be just that t tiny little bit better, just for the, the one-off attacks. Um, just because, yeah, the, the Lotto Sword is only, like, so good. Yeah, you see, 260. I should be able to earn just that extra thousand gold in time. Um, I know technically as well, like, yeah, the princess could, you know, do with a hat. But, I don't know, I've, I'm feeling pretty okay right now. Always return for the hat as well because it's, it's a bit of an investment. The hat. Bit more money. Wow. Um, 
but yeah. Uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 I have a very guilty pleasure for, and it's not because there's a Rush song in the game that's automatically, like, always playing first every time you turn the game on. I don't know why. I don't know why that's the case. Um, a Repel? That's... Bro, like, the, the Repel is actually anti-worth it. I, I don't want that. Um, but also, I kind of, I like the visuals a little bit. Just... Like, it's not, like, spectacular, but it sort of looks alright for, like, Fairly early PS2. 2002 is pretty pretty early in that lifespan. Um, it does only run at $30 on consoles. That's such a... It is a bit of a... Mm. Um, given that you've got much better looking... or well, fairly good looking games that do run at 60 interlaced. So it's just like... Eh, it could have been okay. Um, but also, I, I like the tracks. They're sort of these sweeping kinds of like highways all over the place. Um... Uh, which is sort of classic, very typical uh, Need for Speed design in, in quite a lot of cases. Um, but like, they used to have some like weird like city tracks in Porsche Unleashed, which I thought was kind of fun. Um, but I guess uh, High Stakes used to have like these kinds of circuits as well. Um, anyway, uh, the Light Sword. Try using it as an item because it casts uh, Surround, I believe. Very curious. Okay, we're good here. Let's just teleport back and I don't know, try and maybe take a crack at the dungeon a little bit. I don't expect to get too far, but you know, we've now got some actual, some actual defense you know going on. Or at least Art isn't just completely exposed. He's got his, his armor that's good now. Yep. Thank you very much. I am healing. I am healing. Um, the other thing I kind of like about... I don't know. It's, it's, it's a really guilty pleasure. But one thing I kind of really like about Hot Pursuit 2 is how like weirdly long and arduous the tracks are. Um, most of the tracks are like three or sometimes four minutes long in just length. It's just it's very grueling. And then they'll chuck like three or four lap events at you. So... You're sort of on these for like 15 minutes at times. Um, by the end of the campaign, you're also forced into like tournaments of eight races where each one is three laps on one of these tracks. So it's just like, you're spending like an hour and a half on these. Um, if that sounds very not appealing, then I guess that's why I probably like this game more than the typical person. The typical person might be like, yeah, no, nah, like, most wanted. I, know, I I like Most Wanted, although I, I prefer Underground 2 a little bit, but I also feel like, ah, uh, there's just, there's a part of me that really, really likes just this. So, um, anyway, if we go around the outside a little bit, uh, we should be able to find the castle. It's Dragon Quest, you gotta end in the castle. What's a Dragon Quest game that hasn't ended in the castle, you know? Don't say most of them, because I know, yeah. <laughs> I know off the top of my head, Dragon Quest IX doesn't end in the castle. I don't think eight did either. Or seven. Five does, I believe. five does. Did eleven end in the castle? Yes, I think. Yes, it did. We have defeated Blizzard. The day is saved. No one will play Overwatch again. Yeah, I'll just throw myself at, at this. We'll see how we go. Because I think we're now at the point, you know, Art's got some stuff. What? Hold on, I'm just walking around this whole thing. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, where, where am I going? We've got our friendly cast of characters to try and stop me from going in. They can't stop me, because I can't read. I'm glad he wasn't affected by that, because it would have been very sad for him if he was. I wonder if me casting decrease like, convinces the AI to cast Increase. 
Oh, well, rip, rip hot. Remember when I said you had the fence? Oh! Oh, 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 I'm just gonna cop it, man. I'm just copping it. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> well, you can't deal with that. You can't deal with that. <laughs> I've got the world leave chillin', but you know that's for a very particular, you know, in case boss fight. So yeah, was there a faster way here or no? I think that's actually, yeah, that is the way to go all the way around this lake. Yeah, that is the way. Maybe I'll have a better run trying to get here this time. But hey, the more encounters I beat on the way, you know, the better chance I've got. Yeah, again, you know, if every fight is giving you more than a thousand experience, and sometimes even two thousand, you know, you get a level every every few fights. It starts to get longer and longer, but yeah, you really only need like, I guess, if you're around level thirty, you've probably got like three hundred thousand experience, and three hundred thousand experience is a lot closer than you know a million. In the grand scheme of things, like, hold on, like, I was thinking earlier, it's like, I was at, what, 82,000 experience on the main character and 64,000 on art? Just joking at, like, how low his, his, uh, experience was. Oh my gosh, a devil sword! But, like, check it out now. We're at 122,000 and 105,000. We've gotten 40,000 experience. Just the stream, and we haven't even gotten to the strongest enemies, and we also haven't even found a metal slime to, to fight. Keep making progress. It's just it's just a bit of a brick wall difficulty of just Yeah, yeah, I get it. You know. Dudes everywhere. And they hit hard, I know, I know, I get it. Yeah, if I had to be scathing though and, and critique this game again, and I know I said this kind of last week, but I'll I'll just say it again, it's like there's certainly a... A, a wizard stuff? Curious? It's not a very strong weapon, I'm just surprised they're giving it to me all of a sudden. At least the devil sword is like, you know, it's a cursed item, but it's strong. And it's also worth a ton. Okay, we're just fighting four of these guys now. Um... But yeah, I certainly do appreciate Dragon Quest 2 for all the things that it adds to the franchise. Having multiple uh, characters, I think this combat works fairly nicely. Um, you know, and, and balancing out with like different characters that have different healing abilities and you have these... Uh, also, I guess, fighting multiple enemies. Because remember, the first game, you only fought one thing at a time. All the time. It meant that the encounters were a lot easier to, you know, process and deal with compared to... Um, you know, the, I guess, this game where, you know, sometimes you have one dragon and sometimes you have four. And it's a very different kind of encounter. Um, so there's that. Uh, it's another wizard stuff, okay. Um, I know it's sort of cheating because it is still part of the same Game Boy Color package, but I do like the, the presentation as well, just of how this whole thing looks and, and plays. And I feel like on the on the NES, it did cut to black. It was black with, with the enemies on the background, or on, on screen rather than like having a background, I believe. Like the first game. It was a little different. Oh yeah, I've got Explode It. I can just use that. Cool, cool attack. Hey, no, no, wrong person using Explode It. A big hit, though. I'll tell you that. Wah. We're cutting it. We're cutting it fine. Oh, oh, oh! I think we got him. I think we got him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, as long as the main character doesn't cover right now. 
Is Ott going for a regular attack? Look at that, easy. Max HP rose by 8, strength rose by 4. Another Devil Sword, sure, okay. Now we're in, like, heal all territory. This is starting to get very heal all. Alright, so finally, <laughs> 2 hours 30 into the stream. What is this castle? Well, um... Kind of reminds you of a other place that sells very basic items. In fact, actually, I think this is an opportunity to sell those double swords. Can I, can I do that hilariously? Yeah, he, he actually does sell you that, so... Um, yeah, if you wanted to cash in your Devil Swords, I guess now's an opportunity. Uh, does this in work? I think it does, actually. Yeah, it does. Which is kind of hilarious. Welcome to Warrior Castle. Oh, Prince Mindo, welcome home! Uh, okay. Sure. And we can even wander in here, where you can see there's all these chests, like bef before. But uh, unfortunately, I think every single one of them is empty. Which is very, very sad. But I'm, I'm glad that the shop and the inn works. Um, so yeah, this castle is a, a point for point replica of the starting castle in the game. In fact, this guy is like, hey, I'm ashamed. In my ignorance, I thought I should be trying to bring Lord Hagen down. Uh, oh. Oh. Okay. Since swearing loyalty to Lord Hagen, the king has been happy. Bundo, if you ever see Lord Hagen, please convey our gratitude to him. I replaced the old duke to serve the king. My name is Mimi. It's such a peaceful world, so I was hired to brighten up the atmosphere of the castle. My dancing is out of this world. Rather than some old, some stuffy old duke who only skulks in his boring ways, don't you think I'm much better? Ha 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 Uh, okay. Oh, you naughty king. Who's being silly? <laughs> oh, aren't you a cute prince? Come on, let's celebrate. You can talk to the king. Wahaha, Bunda, welcome home. I'm sorry about my misunderstanding of Lord Hagen. My mistake resulted in a lot of trouble for you. But things are fine now. Lord Hagen turned out to be a fair and kindly man. He allowed me to become one of his humble subjects. Wahaha, he even agreed to look after you. So there's no need for you to go on with your silly quest. So obviously this seems a bit wrong. Don't it? Use the Rubus charm. Pray with the Rubus. This is the whole point of why we're collecting this item anyways. A beautiful voice echoes. Bundo, do not be fooled. It is all an illusion. Open your eyes and see for yourself. And, uh, yeah, no, uh, it's actually a dungeon. <laughs> Welcome to... Yeah, so these are uh, spirits just pretending to be legit, but they're not. They're not. It was all fake. It was all make-believe in the end. <laughs> um... But yeah, other than that, like, I mean, this is just uh, a dungeon somewhat, although kind of looks like a castle, but isn't quite. You should have stayed, fool! How sad for you to lift the illusion! Oh, and, and I guess we fight a guy just, just in case. Oh, these guys, okay. I appreciate the two different enemies, just to mess with me a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, so, uh, yeah, this is the last, uh, dungeon of the game. I'll probably not beat it, I guess, at this rate, given my, uh, lack of experience points. Um. But, uh, there's still some things that we can, like, get, and, hey, you know, if I can find some stronger enemies to either defeat and or realize that I am nowhere near capable of defeating, then, uh, win-win for everyone. These guys are certainly not too bad anymore, though, aren't they? So, anyway, defeated him. Uh, you know the drill? Cast step guard to step on these. Uh, there's actually secretly a door here. And then, uh, if you ignore that one door, you can find over here a chest. This chest actually contains the double tail. I have no more space. Whoa. What have I been picking up? Staff, so they're pointless. Oh, and I'm still holding on to a lot of sword, yeah, that makes sense. 
I got a devil sword and another devil sword, so really I uh, don't have much capability to hold anything. The double tail? <laughs> uh, hold on, let me just double check. What does the devil tail do? Double tail. I'll walk over to the other side while I'm looking at it. The devil's tail! In the Dragon Quest wiki. Oh, oh, oh. This is dealing damage to me all of a sudden. Not sure why, but okay. Uh, the devil tail is... Cursed. Uh, equipping it doubles the chance of an enemy cast of snooze or fizzle to work. Sells for a bit of money. And really doesn't do anything else. Okay. Cool. Very straightforward. Uh, also the devil armor. Yeah, you can tell what probably this does, can't you? So, no mystery. <laughs> Is it worth it? No. Like, let me just let me just make sure. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. It is. Oh, this, okay. It's kind of high, but again, you know, increases your chance of getting fizzled. Now, there's a cross in the middle of here, so uh, love your religious iconography, uh, it's great. Uh, you need to make sure that you use the uh, the uh, evil statue, which is why I was like, oh yeah, whoops, don't get rid of that. Use that and you're finally onto another floor of the dungeon. Um, there's not really much to this floor, I believe, it's just a weird room here. Uh, but we're starting to get into, you know, some, some more enemies, so instead of uh, icy flame, it's now actual fire. Actually, I think these guys are easier. These are just regular flames. So they're actually easier than the previous ones. Not too bad. I don't know if you can cast fire on the fire, though. It doesn't seem to be working. Oh, it's got some fire bane back, though. That's not very nice, is it? Yeah, I think they actually might be immune to this kind of stuff. There's a bunch of them though, I'll tell you that. Might as well just attack, you know? Might as well just attack. Like, they don't have much health, they've only got like... I think 65 health, but like that was a little bit off, and also a uh, high breathing fire. It starts to add up the breathing fire. Good thing I've got uh, my uh, my heal shield, so I might as well just use that for a hot second. And crits are always fun. Yeah, these guys, uh, give a bit of experience, but it's not as much as the actual, uh, the blizzards earlier. Is it, so? Headed up here, through a staircase, and we're on yet another floor. We'll just keep wandering around here, I'll probably get wrecked at some point. I don't think there's actually anything to find at this point, though. You're just kind of going through and... and <gasps> But will I get wrecked? Will I get wrecked in the process? Listen, it's a risk I'm willing to take to try and slap these guys first go. Oh, there goes one. And he increases defense by zero. How could you? Alright, we got one damage. We got one damage. We got two damage. Dang it. Dang it. I just, I just really wanted to feed a, a liquid metal slime. That's, that's all I ask for in life. Oh, dang it, and then it's gonna cop it. Yeah. Oops. Should've taken this Magus out first, I tell ya. Hey, 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 hold on! <laughs> hey, that's illegal! You're not allowed to bring him back. Is this actually, like, 
the same. I think this might be the same Magus from a you know boss fight Magus. Okay, he's riding the line, bro. Riding the line. No, it's a classic when it's like, oh, it's a classic when it's like, yep, revive, oh, you know, full health. And you don't get double the experience, I think. Might as well just keep, keep rolling, keep trucking, see what's going on. We go up another floor. But yeah, other than that, I think it's like a fairly ordinary just trek. I don't think there's really any mystery going on. Um, the only thing, I guess, is that you will cop um, some boss fight encounters, such as this. Welcome to uh, boss fight number one. It, it's, he's special. This is Atlas. He's big. And I have absolutely nothing more to really do to him. I got increase. He's gonna attack twice, and he's gonna be very mean when he does that. But I got a crit! Oh! And then I hit flee for some reason, because I'm an idiot. We had a good thing! Yep, well, there goes that, so... Oh! Oh! Oh my gosh! Don't even need Nana. Uh, there's not really any mystery to, I guess... You know, he takes damage and calls it a day. Also, uh, yeah, you can just j jump off the building. Very easily in that room. So, uh... Whoops. I have two health. You know how this is gonna end. Expecting uh, more rough guys. But I guess maybe not, actually. All the rough guys are out here. Bring it on! Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just thinking, like, how many other ones? Because we're just for Atlas. Legitimately, I think, actually, outside may be one of the toughest enemies. I was expecting there to be tougher guys in the castle, but I think, yeah, well. They're just one off mini bosses. And Atlas has almost the same amount of health as an Arc Demon, so... <laughs> Gives way more experience, though. I think this encounter has, like, more health than, than Atlas. It's like... Eh. Alright, we'll, we'll, we'll grind out for a bit and we'll just chill. You know, chill times. Um, okay, uh, uh, I need to survive one turn at least. Come on. Come on, guys. Cool attack. Cool and normal. I'm very worried there, but it seemed, it seemed okay. It worked out okay. They did have metal slimes in the castle, though. They did have metal slimes. Do you just take more cracks at it, or...? I don't know. <laughs> no one's too close to a level up, but, uh, yeah, we'll keep pushing, I guess. Yeah, I haven't really been playing anything else in particular. Just, again, continue on Grid Legends, but nothing more to say. It's just more gameplay. You gotta, you gotta keep pushing, keep, keep doing more stuff, and eventually, you win. Uh... Yeah, other than that, I haven't really, haven't really played anything. I continued on Guitar Hero 80s, and I beat play with me and I thought it was a lot easier than the Smash Hits version, which I think probably everyone finds because I don't 
I don't know, the cover just doesn't have anywhere near as many notes as uh, the Smash Hits version. Just in, in terms of, uh, like, the actual song itself. Ah, oh, come on! The worst part about Art being the one dying is that Art's got the teleport, so if I really wanted to, like, quickly go back and do a revive, then I can, if he's alive. Back I go. What's the odds I get an encounter before I go back? Your odds were bad, apparently. Oh. <laughs> go on, Bundo. Go on. <laughs> um, but again, yeah, not much to say about Guitar Hero 80, so. Um, also, yeah, disclaimer, I haven't played Helldivers, so all the bits I'm ripping on uh, are mostly about just, uh, what I've seen from a community backlash and all this stuff, and I, at some point it's like, man, you know, like, I, like, I had this story about, oh, oh, I forgot to mention as well, um, so one, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just say, I, I was like, man, you know, like, this is another just, I see some stuff on, on the internet and people are getting riled up, and I guess it's worth talking about, but it's also like, yeah, you know, like, it only affects me in the sense of, like, I've seen similar things happen to other games that haven't been popular, so they don't attract the attention as, as much, but, um, yeah, like, my, my gut feeling is like, yeah, you know, like, this is just how I feel. If this was a game I played, this is how I feel, so... Also, uh, take everything I say sort of lighthearted. Like, I don't know, I, I, I probably ramble and say a bunch of, bunch of stuff that's just like, hey, well, do I strongly believe that? I don't, I don't really think so, I don't know. Um, but in this case, I sort, I, I sort of do feel very right now. I do really want uh, there to be something, something to grip the nation a little bit. To uh, make sure that our video games don't just disappear from our libraries or change very willy-nilly under our hoods. And, uh, there is exactly that. Uh, there's a e-petition, uh, for the Parliament of Australia. Uh, EN6080. Uh, you can look this petition up, uh, if you want. Uh, and, and if you're also not Australian, please don't sign it. It's, it's for Australians. It's for Australian government. Don't, don't fake that kind of stuff. That's, that's um, but, uh, reading out the, uh, the petition, uh, an increasing number of software companies, foreign and local, publish software that is arbitrarily required to phone home in order to function. This is especially prevalent in entertainment software such as video games. Unlike normal software, where a publisher discontinues such products, they do not simply uh, end development and technical support, instead, they choose to render all copies of the software inoperable effectively withdrawing customers' rights under the Australian Consumer Law to ownership and undisturbed possession of the purchased goods. Many companies go to great lengths to prevent customers restoring their property to working order, withholding vital components of their function from end users. Uh, these practices rob customers of the products they fairly purchase and make restoration and preservation impossible. Due to the technical nature of software products and current legislative ambiguity, clearer legislation is needed. So the petition requests, we therefore ask the House to enact legislation to 1. Require software sold in Australia to remain in a functional state after the end of the product support period. Uh, I'm just going to kill more. Um, continuing to operate without any intervention from the publisher. Uh, Number two, require publishers selling additional features and assets for software to leave said software in a functional state after the end of the product support period, so customers can continue to utilize features and assets they purchase without any intervention from the publisher. And three, establish that these requirements supersede uh, software and user license agreements, as many such licenses attempt to strip customers' rights to ownership over their purchased goods, as guaranteed under Schedule 2 of the Competition and Consumer Act 2010. So, this is very an Australian thing, these are our laws, and Australian consumer law is uh, famously, in the international scene, very, very, like, you know, you can't goof the customers anywhere near as hard as some other countries can. Like, there are a lot of things that we're just entitled to, like, things like extended warranties are absolutely worthless here, because you could 
really easily argued that yes, my computer product shouldn't last one year because how many people buy computers every year? And the courts would probably go, yeah, you're right. And they'd just be like, yeah, no. Like, you know, your one year warranty should really be like two or three, you know what I mean? Like, um, and I, I know some of it's like grain of salt, but it's like, yeah, like these companies sell you stuff, but like, they, they kind of are guaranteed to do, you know, a, a very, very comfy amount of support under consumer law. There's also things about returns, there's things about, uh, you know, like misleading advertising and false, uh, you know, sales and all this kind of jazz. Uh, you have to use this uh, thing every single time, though. That's kind of annoying. Although I guess you could rest it in for a very, very low amount of uh, money. It's not a revive, but it's like, after doing that trek, you can at least recover your magic. Also, you don't have to stand next to that guy, you can use the Rubus Charm anywhere. But you gotta see for yourself every time! I guess, yeah, we'll take another crack at this. And uh, second item use. Oof. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, I signed this petition. I feel like this is definitely a very, very, very good thing to, at the very least, get some, uh, you know, uh, consensus and some establishment by government. Um, it's currently at 4,652 signatures, which I don't really know is a ton for them to respond to. I'm amazed Exploder is enough to kill all four dragons. That would have been very convenient a while ago, wouldn't it? Um, but I think that this is a very good thing for people to, to be aware of. Obviously, video games are the prime target. Woo! Just, I want to get the kill. I just want to get the kill. No, 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 no. That's bad. Don't run. Well, I got three misses, so that... Wow. And in the process, Art dying, which uh, probably would have happened anyway, so that's a bit of a shame. That's so annoying that it's like there's two liquid metal slimes and both of them are just like running too quickly, or at least I'm not getting a crit in time. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I've signed this. I, I hope it gets at least a bit of traction. Um, definitely, uh, this is video game targeted. I don't think there's particularly a lot of other examples of software that's like this, although one could make the argument of software that's suddenly now geared towards subscriptions. Um, there's probably actual examples, I, I think, out there of uh, ones where it's like, software sells you a perpetual license and then forces you out after an amount of time because they decided to just charge you more. I want to say there was an example of some piece of software that's like that, and uh, that was very, very shameworthy, that one. Um, but I can't remember what it was in particular, so... Uh, I think if we just wander left... Oh. There you go. Uh, but we got Bazuzu! We got another boss fight! Uh, I'm curious how good Explode That will do, but we'll see. Okay, nice. He shouldn't have too much health, but again, you know how it do be. He's, he's dishing the same the same beef back at you. I should cut the fence on him, I guess. Maybe make this fight a bit quicker. I don't think he's that bad, though. Firebane? Not too bad. Yeah, he's not attacking twice. I don't, I'm not feeling as harsh. One more, yeah, yeah. And it's only got 250 health, again, just like the other one. So, it's not too bad. 
Gives you a fair amount of experience, though, I'll tell you. They actually did used to give, like, half as much experience on the NES version. On the NES version, I can talk. There you go. Um, which is like, eh, it's, it's alright. It'd be better if I had art alive, though, to capitalize on a little bit of free, easy experience, but it's, like, it's 3,000. Uh, third boss. This is Zarlox, the, the destroyer. I don't know, the destroyer I've added in. Uh, I don't have a lot of magic, but, uh, let's see. Okay, cool. Take another crack at that one. Uh, it's got Explore that, so that's obviously very nice. going ham on that Explode Ed, isn't he? Uh, he's, again, not too bad, but 320 health, which makes him definitely the strongest enemy we've seen so far. And, you know, certainly him dodging attacks is just getting kind of old by now, isn't it? And him casting Explode all the time is also kind of getting a bit old. But I'm confident I... I'm able to just, like, stick this through. I feel like the Atlas was kind of annoying with the double attacking. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. This guy sucks. This guy... This lad. This lad. Oh! That was a double attack. I saw that. I spotted that. Saw it in action. Well, I can't heal, so, uh... Just in defense. Oh, probably cop it at some point. He's, re he's he's just not he's just not feeling it, is he? Yeah, I feel like he's got me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He had me. He had me. Well, in that case, I think that's a good <laughs> calling point, um, because it, that is, by the way, the last little mini-boss just before the actual final boss of the game. Um, potentially, I might actually have this soon-ish, but we'll leave it for one last stream. I know it <laughs> didn't really make much progress. I climbed up a, a mountain, uh, wandered into Snowland, grinded a bunch of enemies, and complained a bunch about uh, a game I've never played yet. Uh, but... To be fair though, I think that's pretty productive in my eyes. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the stream, or if you didn't enjoy the stream and you hated it, uh, you can feel free to follow on Twitch, where I stream every 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, just like the time I started this stream. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, you can subscribe there where you see the stream bots. And if you're on the other platform, you can join, you can see the other platform to see it live or to see the VOD if you miss bits of it. And the VOD always ends up very soon, so that's all good. Uh, you can also follow me at m.bnl.com where I complain about uh, electric vehicle prices, apparently, is what I complained about last time. Um, it's like Twitter, but uh, you don't do it for the numbers and you don't get, like, uh, nudes and bio at the end. No one does that, really. I've seen some people spam messages on the Fetty, but, like, what's the point? Unless you're trying to hack people. But it's kind of obvious if you're doing that, so. Anyways, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late like I do, and, uh, I guess make sure that you're the right level before you fight final bosses. <laughs> See ya, everyone. Woo!